Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we are on the last episode of Game of Thrones, and it's it's such a bittersweet thing, to be honest, man. So many hours of content, uh, so many amazing stories, so many character arcs, so many amazing deaths, uh, so many amazing moments of life. This show's really been incredible. I feel like even me and you as a couple, I feel like we've grown throughout the series. We've had so much fun talking about it. We've laid in bed and talked about it and We've just had a lot of fun watching it, man. I just want you guys to know this series means a lot to us. Also, I know a lot of you guys are really passionate about it. And it's definitely something that we're going to remember forever. I'm going to consider this a cornerstone of our channel for a long time to come. There's one episode left. I know a lot of people are divided on the ending. And, you know, I just think so far it's an amazing story. Stay tuned to the end, guys. We're going to break this thing down and give it everything we got one last time. Babe, what do you want to say? I, I just can't wait for it. Um, guys, please subscribe. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers and it would really help us in House of the Dragons if you guys would press that button. We we are so happy you guys joined us on this journey. For real, man, for and real. And we cannot wait to finish this up right here. Yeah, man, we're really so grateful, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, a lot of times we've hit the nail on the head. A lot of times we've been completely off, oh, especially yeah. me. <laughs> well, me too. We made a lot of friends on this journey. We've pissed a lot of people off. We've been <laughs> particularly myself, highly opinionated sometimes. And nothing's going to change today, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Wow. Last time. I guess at this point, I can basically say that like, I signed the show. I feel like I raised it. <laughs> I know it's emotional. This is emotional. I'm just trying not to cry. Think about all the amazing characters, all the amazing roles. Everything from from Joffrey to freaking Ramsey to Hodor. Like man, Ned Stark. Oh my gosh, Rob Stark. Two Bs. Lady Catelyn. Vladimir Bolton. Masande. Dora. We'll miss him. Davos. I'll miss Davos. Not to mention your boy Varys. <laughs> just stop i mean i can name every character in the show i miss you all beyond i don't really miss your on though that's the truth yeah comment below if you miss your on <laughs> if you do <laughs> um why <laughs> maybe i won't miss the mountain either i don't really care about him let's be real guys we won't miss it too bad because we're gonna rewatch this <laughs> yeah maybe we'll be the first channel to rewatch it live on youtube there, like. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Damn. Start out like that, huh? Tyrion's like, life's funny, ain't it? It sure is. Shoot. What? That's a dead man walking right there. Dang. What in the heck, man? They weren't necessarily thriving these these streets though. Well, relatively speaking, they were. I mean, much more so than now. I definitely get your sentiment for sure. The horse. I'll find you later. It's not safe. Let me send some men with you. I'm going alone. I don't really know how to feel about Tyrion either. Like in a way, he sort of helped engineer this. Yeah, it's. You know, bittersweet. Like, like Cersei says, she doesn't really care about his actions. She just cares about the consequences of his actions. The be Look at that. This was so majestic before. Like, just being in King's Landing, it was so colorful and bright. And look, Tyrion's on his way to the Red In the name Keep. of the one true queen, Daenerys Targaryen, I sentence you to die. Grey Worm. Those are prisoners. Yeah, Lannister are prisoners. These men are prisoners. It is not over until the Queen's enemies are defeated. How much more defeated do you want them to be? They're on their knees. They are breathing. Oh, Look cool. around you, friend. We won. I obey my Queen's commands, not yours. And what are the Queen's commands? Kill all who follow Cersei Lannister. These are free men. They chose to fight for her. Not really. She would kill their families. Right. They're kind of slaves too, in a way. Easy, man. Easy. John, we should speak with the Queen. Dang, Grey Worm. Double dang gray worm. And he's doing it himself. Yeah, he's been taken over by the blackness, baby. You know, like, I can understand his passion, though, because the way they executed Masande was oh, so that evil. that was so sickening. Yeah. Okay, crazy. Let's be real. Such a finale moment right here, isn't it? So beautiful. Yeah. 
to be honest, I didn't expect the immediate aftermath. I thought time would progress or something since this is the last episode. Right? Yeah. Oh my. To be honest, I thought it collapsed more than that. I thought the whole thing crumbled. Yeah, I thought you wouldn't even be able to access it. Oh my. Dang, man. <gasps> Cersei's face. <laughs> The sad version of Reigns of Castamere in the background. Followed up by some of the best acting you've ever seen in your life. By Tyrion right here. Pure Lannisterian moment. <laughs> it's an impossible life you live, Tyrion. I think you did your best. Damn. Some Dothraki. To be honest, I thought they all got killed. I mean, then, but then Grey Worm said half. But the, well, he did, but it didn't look like it. Holy junk, guys. That's a big ass flag. This is the craziest scene yet. <clears throat> look at Arya. Oh so my. now it's like her and Jon feeling like these people invaded their, their homeland. And it looks like the north because it looks like it's snowing, but it's not. Guys, that was sick. What an end. Look at this shot right here. Yes. What are you yesing about? It just looks cool. Settle down. Shapka Regis Anhan. Regis and Dali. Shapka Regis Anhan. Regis and Dali. Oh, I mean, guys, I know y'all get mad when I say Hitler vibes, but kind of Hitler vibes. Nadiro mentiro hetri casa barje carje ixa. Avitolvio a nuro gento si brosan. Dario Valerio Valeriat. Promotion. You like master of war? Hell yeah. I'll bring it. Dovo Geris. She used to wear color, now she's all black. You see it? Uh -huh. Her clothes? With a little red back there. Dare mi rosse istat! In va batolvio viho beoldi da vende! In veli basma tetos da or! In va batolvio viho ni non tiraderat! Tolvrio pregelat! She crazy as hell. Why? In winter velva dornot! No! In laneso valeniot! Leave Karth alone. Grivy in Noma Prajalat! So eliminate everybody? Well, in her mind, she's liberating people, but you see what her version of liberation looks like. There ain't no one left in that city besides her army. Everyone's dead. Or hiding under rubble. She was relieved right there, didn't she? Well, they're back to like chaining for her. Remember when she was up on the dragon? Yeah. She felt lonely up there. What you doing, Tyrion? Oh no. I can't believe he's about to stab her. Her hair, though. Your brother. You committed treason. I freed my brother, and you slaughtered his city. Damn. Hold out. Oh my gosh, Tyrion, you're gonna die. Oh my gosh, no way. Not by Dragonfire. Uh-oh. Abandoned by another person. 
Zirine Jakatas. I know her kill count is so high right now. Like, why not just add one more? Man, if you're gonna do all that, Tyrion, you should have just stabbed her in the kidney real quick. That's not his style. This is gonna be an awkward relationship for them. That was an insane scene right there. Dang, John used to snoop that. He's like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> she crazy. What are you doing here? What happened? I came to kill Cersei. Your queen got there first. She's everyone's queen now. Try telling Sansa. Wait for me outside the city gates. I'll come find you. John, she knows who you are, who you really are. You'll always be a threat to her. Always. And I know a killer when I see one. Yeah, she really, really does. Did you bring any wine? <laughs> no. Thank you for coming to see me. Our queen doesn't keep prisoners for long. I suppose there's a crude kind of justice. I betrayed my closest friend and watched him burn. Now Varys's ashes can tell my ashes. See? I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. It just occurred to me. I'm talking to the only man alive who knows where I'm going. So is there life after death? Not that I've seen. I should be thankful. Oblivion is the best I could hope for. <laughs> I strangled my lover. I shot my own father with a crossbow. I betrayed my queen. You didn't. I did, and I'd do it again now that I've seen what I've seen. I chose my fate. People of King's Landing did not. I can't justify what happened, but the war is over now. Is it? When you heard her talking to her soldiers, did she sound like someone who's done fighting? Mm -mm. Not really. I think she thought that was fun. She liberated the people of Slaver's Bay. She liberated the people of King's Landing. And she'll go on liberating until the people of the world are free. And she rules them all. And you've been by her side, counseling her until today. Until today. Varys was right. I was wrong. It was vanity to think I could guide her. Our queen's nature is fire and blood. You think our house words are stamped on our bodies when we're born, and that's who we are? Ah, then I'd be fire and blood too. She's not her father, no more than your Tywin Lannister. My father was an evil man. My sister was an evil woman. Pile up all the bodies of all the people they ever killed. There still won't be half as many as our beautiful queen slaughtered in a single day. Is John in denial? I think so. That's what it seems like. Oh, her friend beheaded. She saw her dragon shot out of the sky. And she burned down a city for it. Ah, it's easy to judge when you're standing far from the battlefield. Would you have done it? You've been up there on a dragon's back. You've had that power. Would you have burned the city down? I don't know. <sighs> yes, you do. No, you wouldn't, John. <laughs> I would take his answer. I would take his word for it. Well, maybe you would have. Must it matter what I do? It matters more than anything. Damn, John. When she murdered the slavers of Astapor, I'm sure no one but the slavers complained. After all, they were evil men. When she crucified hundreds of Miranese nobles, who could argue they were evil men? The Dothraki calls she burned alive. They would have done worse to her. Everywhere she goes, evil men die, and we cheer her for it. And she grows more powerful and more sure that she is good and right. Tell him, Tyrion. This is deep. She believes her destiny is to build a better world for everyone. If you truly believed it, wouldn't you kill whoever stood between you and paradise? Never had time for philosophy. <laughs> it's too busy defeating the army of the dead. I know, it's all moved very quick. <laughs> I know you love her. I love her too. Not as successfully as you. <laughs> <laughs> but I believed in her. With all my heart. Man, me too. Love is more powerful than reason. Love is the death of honor. We all know that. Look at my brother. I thought it was duty. Love is the death of duty. <laughs> love is the death of duty. <laughs> Let's go, John. Brooke for $100. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you just came up with that. Mm-mm. He heard that. Mr. Eamon he said it a long time ago. Sometimes duty is the death of love. Dang, that's that 360 Uno card. <laughs> of men. You've always tried to do the right thing, no matter the cost. You've tried to protect people. Who is the greatest threat to the people now? It's a terrible thing I'm asking. It's also the right thing. Do you think I'm the last man she'll execute? Who is more dangerous than the rightful heir to the Iron Throne? Come on, John. Like, why are you making them beg you, dude? She's crazy. She just destroyed the whole city. That's her decision. She is the queen. Dude. Oh, I'm sorry I came to this. Man. A weasel's way out of anything that old Tyrion. And your sisters. Do you see them bending the knee? Not really. My sisters will be loyal to the throne. Why do you think Sansa told me the truth about you? 
Because she doesn't want Danny to be queen. She doesn't get to choose. No, but you do. And you have to choose now. So go be Aegon. Whatever that means to you. The soldiers are just like... <laughs> <laughs> This intense combo. Either Tyrion wheels his way out or either he finally get, meets his due. And I can't tell. Right, because it's the last episode. <laughs> yeah, and it's stressing me out because I it has really to be don't want to see the other, him right? <laughs> oh my goodness, what is Jonathan going to do? That really is a nuclear winter, though. Radiation is like all up in y'all's lungs. Quick avalanche. Uh oh. <laughs> Snapping. Oh, he's like the bouncer. <laughs> so you can come in the club, John. <laughs> he's like, go on. <laughs> he literally did. He just went right back to sleep. <laughs> what the heck? I'm about to go back to disguising myself as snow slopes. <laughs> I know. What was that about? Where's he going? Oh, to his beloved. Ooh, oh, just like the vision, babe. Yep, just like it. Remember in the vision, she went to go touch it, but then she couldn't or something or she didn't. Right, she's like reaching out for it. These shots, though, man, are giving me chills. And the music, and the music, too, is like perfect. I know I should have earbuds in this one, but guys, I got a damn good right ear. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to have a heart attack. It's her dream. Everything she's done has come to this moment. From Rinley to Stannis to everything right here. We have contact. We have contact, people. She's the queen. Officially. Queen of the ashes. Officially, right now. It looks like ancient Babylon. I ain't even gonna say that word. <laughs> <laughs> Babylon. Yeah, it looks like ancient Babylon out there, but hey. Uh, Pompeii. Oh, the king of ashes. <laughs> when I was a girl, my brother told me it was made with a thousand swords from Aegon's fallen enemies. What do a thousand swords look like in the mind of a little girl who can't count to twenty? Wow. I imagined a mountain of swords too high to climb. So many fallen enemies, you could only see the soles of Aegon's feet. I saw them executing Lannister prisoners in the street. They said they were acting on your orders. It was necessary. Necessary? Have you been down there? Have you seen children? Little children burned! Tried to make peace with Cersei. She used their innocence as a weapon against me. She thought she it did. would cripple me. And Tyrion? He conspired behind my back with my enemies. How have you treated people who've done the same to you, even when it broke your heart? Forgive him. I can't. You can. You can forgive all of them. Make them see they made a mistake. Make them understand. Please, Danny. You can't hide behind small mercies. The world we need won't be built by men loyal to the world we have. The world we need is a world of mercy. It has to be. And it will be. She's just repeating slogans at this point. I know. It's not easy to see something that's never been before. How do you know? How do you know it'll be good? Because I know what is good. So Thanos. I know. You do. You do. You've always known. What about everyone else? All the other people who think they know what's good. That path to hell is paid in good intentions. You don't get to choose. Be with me. Build the new world with me. This is our reason. It has been from the beginning since you were a little boy with a bastard's name. And I was a little girl who couldn't count to 20. We do it together. We break the wheel together. You are my queen. Now and always. John, you're such a simp, bro. Kind of mad about it. I don't even know what to think about that, you know? <laughs> oh, and he stabbed her right in the stomach, man. I kind of thought that was going to happen. Oh. Let's go, John. I hate to see it. What? I really hate to see it. Oh, that's such betrayal. But like, I know why, you know what I'm saying? I get the betrayal, but oh my gosh. Didn't think she'd go out like that. What a good character, man. What a good character. It's like the uh, Ajora High stuff in a way. Yeah, but Azor. Is that what it is, Azor High? <laughs> yeah. I can't pronounce nothing, guys. <laughs> Jeez. Dang. And what's Drogon gonna do? Oh, you eating John. It's kind of Drogon's fault. He let him in there. Dang, man. He is pissed. Oh, man. 
And he knows what happened. He can put two and two together. He's so smart. What if he like burns John, but John doesn't burn because he's Targaryen? Maybe he won't touch John because he's the last Targaryen now. I don't know. He's a dragon. They're gonna end the Targaryen bloodline. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. I think you're right, babe. No, Jakaris. Oh, he missed. What are you shooting? Oh my god. Oh, he's oh. blasting the throne. Bro, wow. he's melting the throne. So he broke the wheel. And just like that, it's gone. Wow. She broke the wheel, all right, man. All the way. Literally. I love it. I love it. Oh, please don't get John, though. And just like that. Man, all that history, all that brutality. Golly, man, like there was just so much history in this place. Good, bad, and different. And she's all and gone. she broke the will. She did it, babe. She broke the will. She destroyed that stupid throne, even in her own disgusting way, but bless her, I feel for her still. Like maybe I'm just growing sympathetic. Jeez Louise, I don't even know what to say right here. He didn't even kill John. He just said, okay. Like I said, maybe he just can't harm a Targaryen. Right, that would, right. Cause he saw him, he just let him in there. I mean, he knew he did it. Man. Where's he going? Mm. Go back to Essos, across the sea. Wow, man. Dang. Rest in peace to Daenerys Targaryen. What an incredible character. An amazing character. What's her name? Arguably Amelia Clark or something? Yeah. Arguably arguably the best in TV history, in my opinion. Amazing job in, in this role. You're phenomenal in this, seriously. Does anyone know what happened? Isn't that the pits again? Yeah. I feel really bad for a Grey Worm, though. Like, in a way, like, I know I shouldn't, but it sucks that Daenerys is gone because his purpose is gone, too. Yeah. Where's John? He is our prisoner. So is Lord Tyrion. They were both to be brought to this gathering. We will decide what we do with our prisoners. This is our city now. If you look outside the walls of your city, you'll find thousands of Northmen who will explain to you why harming Jon Snow is not in your interest. And you will find thousands of Unsullied who believe that it is. Some of you may be quick to forgive. The Ironborn are not. I swore to follow Daenerys Targaryen. You swore to follow a tyrant. She freed us from a tyrant. Cersei is gone because of her, and Jon Snow put a knife in her heart. Let the Unsullied give him what he deserves. Say another word about killing my brother and I'll cut your throat. She really will. Davos. We've been cutting each other's throats long enough. Torgo and Nudo. Am I saying that properly? Yeah, you did. If it weren't for you and your men, we would have lost the war with the dead. This country owes you a debt it can never repay. But let us try. There is land in the reach. Good land. The people that used to live there are gone. Make it your own. Start your own house with the Unsullied as your bannermen. We've had enough war. They don't have thousands any of you, thousands of them. Right. You know how it They're ends. Stuck. We need to find a better way. We do not need payment. We need justice. Jon Snow cannot go free. It's not for you to decide. You are not here to speak. Everyone Ooh. has heard enough words from you. You're right. And no one's any better for it. It's not for you to decide. Jon committed his crime here. His fate is for our king to decide. Or our queen. We don't have a king or queen. You're the most powerful people in Westeros. Choose one. Make your choice then. Like right now? Mm -hmm. One of these people? Who you got? <sighs> oh, jeez. This man. is slim pickings up here, boys. I mean, I love these characters, but. As a oh, player? God. No, don't stand up, Edmund. You better sit your butt down. Can't land a shot. My lords and ladies. <clears throat> Politician speech. I suppose this is the most important moment of our lives. What we decide today will reverberate through the annals of history. I stand before you as one of the senior lords in the country, a veteran of two wars, and I like to think my experience has led to some small skill in statecraft and Uncle. an understand. Please sit. <laughs> <laughs> I was about oh. to be so mad if it was going to come down to this. Oh, video. he laughed. <laughs> he laughed. Oh, my. Sam, maybe? Yeah, maybe Sam. Brienne? Sansa? Sansa's a, Sansa's a North lady to me. I think. That... <laughs> <laughs> He'd lose his head if it wasn't attached. <laughs> we have to choose someone. Um, <clears throat> why just us? 
We represent all the great houses, but whomever we choose, they won't just rule over lords and ladies. Maybe the decision about what's best for everyone should be left to, well, everyone. I said I'd be pissed if they do democracy. Varys would be hyped for this decision. <laughs> 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 Who is that guy? Maybe He's he is <laughs> funny. As well. I'll ask my horse. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a brilliant idea. <laughs> like he's like ahead of his time, you know. I suppose you want the crown. Me. Oh and wow. Never thought about it. Half the people hate me for serving Daenerys, the other half hate me for betraying her. Can't think of a worse choice. Who then? Who? I have had nothing to do but think. These past few weeks about our bloody history, mistakes we've made. What unites people? Armies, gold, flags, stories. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Nothing can stop it. No enemy can defeat it. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? Man, I was thinking it was going to be out to the third over here. <laughs> the boy who fell from a high tower and lived. He knew he'd never walk again. So he learned to fly. He crossed beyond the wall, a crippled boy, and became the three-eyed raven. He is our memory, the keeper of all our stories. The wars, weddings, births, massacres, famines, our triumphs, our past. Who better to lead us into the future? Bran has no interest in ruling, and he can't father children. Good. Sons of kings can be cruel and stupid, as you well know. Oh, this will okay. Never torment us. So when he's gone, they elect like someone else. Our queen wanted to break. From now on, rulers will not be born. They will be chosen on this spot by the lords and ladies of Westeros to serve the realm. I know you don't want it. I know you don't care about power. But I ask you now, if we choose you, will you wear the crown? Will you lead the Seven Kingdoms to the best of your abilities from this day until your last day? He's saying that in chains, isn't that kind of crazy? Why do you think I came all this way? That was kind of weird. Because he, he sees everything. He's like... The Brandon of House Stark. Did he know that was going to happen and all? Say I. That's what I don't know. He said, why do you think I came all this way? Like, he knew all this was going to happen or something. That's kind of oh, weird. So maybe he wants to be. What if it's his own game of thrones? He own? can see everything that's going to happen and stuff. I. I. <laughs> I. 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 He was acting normal I. this time. I know, it was so I. crazy, wasn't it? I. I. I'm not sure I get a vote, but I. <laughs> <laughs> I. Ne he never feels worthy of being anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, little brother. I always will. You'll be a good king. But tens of thousands of Northmen fell in the Great War, defending all of Westeros. And those who survived have seen too much and fought too hard ever to kneel again. The North will remain an independent kingdom, as it was for thousands of years. Let's go, Sansa. Fight for it, girl. I'd be speaking up for my <clears throat> kingdom, too. How about us, too? <laughs> but everyone's like, whatever. Everyone's going to miss their boat for the next thousand years. <laughs> He's like, that's my ex-wife. So like, too bad I didn't marry her now. All hell, Bran the Broken, first of his name. King of the Andals and the First Men. Oh, so they're going to write stories about him from now on as Bran the Broken? Mm -hmm. Protector of the realm. Hey. Oh, hell, Bran the Broken. Don't really know how I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, me either. I'm like... His uh, ominous little, why do you think I came all this way, kind of weirded me out. I'm like wheeling around, looking all... It makes me feel like he's the puppet master or something. Right. Lord Tyrion, you will be my hand. Oh, your grace, I don't want it. And I don't want to be king. <laughs> I don't deserve it. I thought I was wise, but I wasn't. I thought I knew what was right, but I didn't. Choose Sir Davos. Choose anyone else. I choose Sir Davos, you. He's like, you cannot. Yes, I can. I'm king. This man is a criminal. He deserves justice. He just got it. He's made many terrible mistakes. He's going to spend the rest of his life fixing them. Okay. It is not enough. Iron blood all day over there. I know that's how for hearing over there. Mm -hmm. Giving you to the unsullied would start a war. Letting you walk free would start a war. So our new king has chosen to send you to the Night's Watch. That's still Night's Watch. Right. The world will always need a home for bastards and broken men. You shall take no wife, hold no lands, father no children. The unsullied wanted your head, of course. Grey Worm has accepted the justice of a life sentence. 
Sansa and Arya wanted you freed, but they understand our new king needs to make peace. No one is very happy, which means it's a good compromise, I suppose. That really sucks. Was it right what I did? What Possibly. Did? It doesn't feel right. Man, that hurt. Because it probably doesn't. Ask me again in 10 years. <laughs> Aww. I feel like I taking the black is good, we'll though. See each other again. I wouldn't be so sure. A few years as Hand of the King would make anyone want to piss off the edge of the world. <laughs> Aww. So John's full circle moment is going back to the Night's Watch. Like, I guess he can never leave it. <laughs> I feel like you should go tell the Unsullied they can go F themselves. Or they can go be the Night's Watch. <laughs> nah, screw them. Don't give them land. Screw them. Like, they're sitting there mad because John killed their tyrant. She came into their land and murdered their capital city, basically. Like, just like exploded it. Come on, Torio. Because that's where Masande wanted to go to see the beaches again. Yeah, because that's where she's from. So Grey Worm's going there to basically serve the place and protect it and all that because that's what she wanted. Aww. That's a good moment for him, full circle. Well, if I was John, I'd just wait till he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd stay. Way. Can you forgive me? I don't know, man. If you wouldn't have told Sansa, maybe all that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> the North is free, thanks to you. But they lost their king. Ned Stark's daughter will speak for them. She's the best they could ask for. Aww. You can come see me, you know. My castle will like... This is that Frodo send-off moment. Absolutely. That's exactly the vibes I was getting. dare tell you women aren't allowed. <laughs> I'm not going back north. Where are you going? What's west of Westeros? Aww. She's about to go be Dora the Explorer. <laughs> no one knows. That's where all the maps stop. Little Christopher Columbus out here. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Okay, Arya. Let's go, Arya. <laughs> That's what she always wanted, right? To be free. You have your needle. Always. Right here. Strapped up. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that was sweet. Aww. You're great. I... I like his new costume. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me. You were exactly where you were supposed to be. Even weirder, Bran. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he can basically start over from scratch the Night's Watch. He can make it what he wants up there. Mm -hmm. So he's the thousandth Lord Commander, basically. Sell me. No. Oh, <laughs> not you first this time. Just a little tired, that's all. <laughs> Ain't she writing a little slow? To it, River Run. Pledge themselves to the forces of men. I saw that much. You see the three eye on her chest? That's insane. Maybe. That's a raven. Oh, I think that hurts because, like, she was totally betrayed and she still wrote something nice. <clears throat> A moment, a moment, for sure. Damn, Tyrion. You belong there, bro. But does he? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, just, you keep ending up there. A long way. <laughs> you keep ending up there. That room was meant for you. Tyrion the clever. Oh, look at him. He's, oh, he's professional this time. Ain't that what Tywin would preach? Remember, he'd get mad if the chairs weren't straight or something. <laughs> I think they just always knew to have him tidy up when Tywin was in there. He ran a tight shift. And he was always late, remember? Now he's early. <laughs> yes, Danny broke that wheel for real, didn't she? Bronn! Why is Bronn there? <laughs> Sir that Davos, was, that's what's up. That's Ern. But Bronn's his boy, so I, I get that too, though. What's this? A song of ice and fire. Sick. Aww. Archmaster Ebro's history of the wars following the death of King Robert. That's the insane. Helped him with the title. I suppose I come in for some heavy criticism. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say that. Oh, he's kind to me. Never would have guessed. That's like Lord of the Rings not, too. He. He what? What does he say about me? Imagine reading that, and that's how history's going to remember you. Just whatever the narrative was they they wrote about you. Right. I don't believe you're mentioned. <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> what? what? <clears throat> well, they told him he wouldn't be remembered. Your grace. Your grace. Your grace. Your grace. Oh, yeah. The Battle of the Blackwater after they... Someone who actually wants to be here. We appear to be missing a Master of Whisperers. 
And a master of laws. And a master of war. Yes, Your Grace. Suitable prospects will be brought to you for an audience. Why do you need whispers? But that's like the old stuff, right? And Drogon? Any word? He was last spotted flying east. To Farther away, land. the better. <laughs> Perhaps I can find him. Do carry on with the rest. As you wish, Your Grace. Sir Podrick. <laughs> we serve at your pleasure, King Bran the Broken, ruler of the six kingdoms and protector of the realm. Long may he reign. 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 <laughs> Long may he reign. Question that mark. Prove. Ron's becoming a company man. I'm sure. Okay. Sir Braun of the Blackwater, Lord of High God, Lord Paramount of the Reach, and Master of Coin. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Say the crown's debt to you has been paid. In full, my lord hand. Good. Time to start incurring a new one. We have hungry people to feed. Can we expect some assistance in this regard? Bro, you don't know Indeed nothing about any of this. <laughs> Lord Davos, we have an armada to rebuild and ports to repair. We have. These projects will begin as soon as the Master of Coin and Lord of Lofty Titles provides funding. <laughs> the Master of Coin looks forward to helping the Master of Ships, but first he has to ensure we're not wasting coin, or soon there won't be no more coin. Anymore. You're Master of Grammar now, too. Grand Maester! <laughs> 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 it is my theory, based on my years of work on man. costly rock sewers, that clean water leads to a healthier population. The Archmaester has done some research on this subject, and it turns out... The strong live and the weak don't. Find the best builders and set them to the task. Oh, speaking of builders, all the best brothels burn down. The Master of Coin is willing to fund reconstruction. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the Master of Coin was. less than enthusiastic about the salutary effects of brothels. Well, I imagine he isn't using them properly. I think we can all agree that ships take precedence over brothels. <laughs> I think that's a very presumptuous statement. I once brought a jackass and a honeycomb into a brothel. <laughs> oh, we didn't get the end of it. We're never We're going never. to. Oh, man. Comment below, what's the end of that joke? <laughs> Maybe it's like a British thing. Back at it again. But your bestie's there. The only thing so far I really can't stand is, well, I can't stand how they're sending John north. I kind of wanted him to be the king. Yeah, but I just feel like it's not a punishment to send him north. So what? I don't know. It's pretty gloomy there. It's long, Paul, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That was like the weirwood tree. Absolutely. Oh, I love Red that. Telescope. Check the Starks. Where she belongs. I guess where she belongs. Wildlings. Lots of redhead ones. I don't think those were dudes. After six months, you probably won't care. <laughs> <laughs> ghost. There's ghosts. One eared ghost, boy. Oh, finally, boy. I love how she has a Stark ship. I know, it's sick. Good job, Arya. Good job. Double, um, is it wielded or yielded? Wielded. Sick. Cause look, it's a wolf. Oh my gosh. The Queen of the North! Okay. Oh. So John's going home, huh? Back to the North. That's the wall where he belongs. Right, I feel like he's going just where he needs to be. No pressure to be king or anything out there. Right. A carrot. <laughs> <laughs> a little hope. A little hope carrot. Look, there's a future. There's youngins. Oh, not the music. Not the music. Ouch. <laughs> Miss that one. That's a bummer. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, baby, go ahead. Ooh, I I don't really know. Why I can't really talk right now. <laughs> I'm just really bummed. Honestly, it was so such a good um a damn good series. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> Jeez. Um. Beep. A little beep screen. <laughs> I guess I can say it wasn't the ending I necessarily wanted, but. What else can you do? Well, like, I'm not mad about the ending, but it wasn't necessarily what my dream ending. <laughs> uh, but 
Jeez. <laughs> What's all that crying about? Uh, wow, I'm over here doing all that crying. Uh, Guys, honestly, uh, that was definitely my favorite show I've ever seen. Me too. Um, By 6,000%. Yeah, that was a really good show. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Piece. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. Uh, oh. Man, that really sucks because uh, I guess it'll never be new again, you know? So that was a uh, first time watching this series. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. And, you know, every time you experience something new like that, it's really special. We'll watch the series again, but. Um, for the first time, like, um, geez, I'm like, I don't know what to say right now. It's hard. <laughs> Because it was such, such a good show, and I feel like I was so emotionally attached to the show, and like just over now, like I can't even like come back to it. I don't, I don't know how to explain that. One thing I'll say is, I, I absolutely love the show. I'm not gonna, okay, I'm gonna just start with the things I loved about the show because it's 90 percent positive for me. I'm 90 yeah, me 10. Too. I would say, I would say I'm probably the same. Okay, guys, so we just needed like a really quick second <clears throat> because the truth is is we just were rambling and not making any sense and we were all over the place. So we took just a super, super quick second and we took a second to just basically write down an order so that way we could sort of keep it together a little bit in terms of not getting all over the place. So we, we're gonna start with just breaking down this episode and then I think we're gonna talk more about the series as a whole. So we'll probably spend like 20, 30 minutes talking about this and then we'll get into it. So right. babe, this story started and I wrote it down right here, the little timeline. But this story started with Tyrion, or this episode started with Tyrion. He was walking around and basically contemplating basically his actions and the consequences of them. So. Right. And just walking through a city that was once thriving, uh, so to say thriving. You, you know, you know, when Tyrion was living in King's Landing, it actually kind of was thriving. Like there's the brothels, like Littlefinger had all the money and all that stuff. So it kind of did appear that way. And then he walked through and it's just ashes at this point. They had enough money for, you know clowns and jesters and they right, even right, had village right. idiots and joffrey was you know decapping people decapitating people in the streets and it was just good times back then <laughs> if you and, think if you say <laughs> and it was just a terrible a terrible world but i don't know man it beats the ashes the ashes right. were tough so it was better than that world he was walking through i was quite surprised to see in the end though a lot more of king's landing survived than i initially thought right i thought she absolutely torched it but i guess in the capital especially in the central areas i'm pretty sure it was so so um Tyrion had a moment of reflection and his mind was on going to see if jamie and cersei escaped and obviously they didn't mm -hmm. uh he saw Incredible the hand. acting yeah the way he cried was the first that's when i started getting a little emotional feeling because his acting is just top class he saw jamie's hand the golden hand sticking out unburied cersei's face Mm -hmm. And it was a pretty thin, you know, it was a little thin layer of, rum of rubble that fell on them. Right. I thought it was going to be the whole entire keep falling on their head. But right. Um, but for the show, it was just Tyrion unbricking those things. So we understand why it was just a little thin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm surprised he was even able to get in there. I thought it was going to be so much worse. Me too. I, I was shocked that it wasn't as bad. But, you know, what can you do? That's how they did it. Whatever. That's the last of the Lannisters. That was a very sad moment. But where did, what happened after that? That was a really sad moment. It, it was really sad to see them go out like that. Right. But at the same time, everyone that, dies eventually right. and them dying together. That's how Jamie wanted. Let's put it that way. And it's all about narrative, right? From a certain perspective, Cersei died protecting her home, right? Right. So, you know, it's kind of bittersweet in that way, but I'll miss those characters a lot. I thought yes. they were really phenomenal. And they were definitely Romeo and Juliet, man. They were something else. So... No one uh, wanted to see them together. You're right. The only time, the only time I'm ever going to give a little pass to some uh, brother and sister relations. <laughs> but for some weird reason, dude, like, it's okay. You know, I'm just glad that they died together. So uh, on the way, on the way to talk to the queen, uh, John ran into Grey Worm, who was executing soldiers in the street. And these, taking them out. Well, these soldiers were Lannister soldiers. And I understand, you know, you shouldn't really have sympathy for them and you know, at least that's what we're told, but it's very clear. Remember when they came across the soldiers in the woods who fought for the Lannisters and they were saying that basically they didn't want to fight in the war. They were basically forced right. to anyway. They basically got drafted, so to say. Yeah. So in a sense, they were sort of slaves too, in a way, right. uh, especially in those moments. So it was just a reverse reigns of Castamere to me. They were taking out all the Lannisters. 
just as the Lannisters do to everyone that comes in contact with them and is the second place team, they'll rain the cast in your ass. And that's what I think Grey Worm was trying to do. And I just thought it was telling because human nature comes into play a lot in the show and feelings and logic are two forces that often are not on the same side and they battle with each other. And Grey Worm essentially chose his feelings there and I can understand why, because when he saw Lannister soldiers murder Masande, I mean, in his mind, he wanted them all to burn right. and go to hell. So I understand that. But I wish that he would have had a little more insight to recognize that, you know, essentially they were being forced into this army, too. I mean, right. even Tyrion said that if, if they don't fight, their families will be murdered and they surrendered, you know, and they surrendered early, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, one could argue that they should have stormed and yank cersei out but i don't know man it's easy it's easy to say right uh that was really sad and basically basically john just wasn't happy with that at all man so next thing you know uh daenerys pulls up which was an incredible shot oh my god with the dragon behind oof right with the dragon wings behind and then danny pulls up man she pulls up and the scene was incredible with the dragon coming i out know of her back. i love that honestly it was visually so cool i thought it was really scary and ominous that scene and when john's walking up the stairs with his head hanging a little bit you can just tell that he just knows that he messed up man and i just don't think that he envisioned in a million years that she would do something like that right and, and if she did, I don't think that he ever thought it would be as destructive as that because I don't think John's ever seen anything like that. No. I mean, even even the Army of the Dead didn't bring that much destruction, to mm-hmm. be honest. So that was pretty incredible. And then she proceeded to give the Reichstag speech up there. And that's I'm pretty sure that's what the showrunners and stuff was trying to recreate in that moment because it was almost just like that Hitler speech. Uh, scene for scene with, with the, big the flag. flag. Yeah, yeah. I was I was feeling the same type of vibe. Right. And then it's really telling in that moment. She is interesting because you can see all the, I guess, like the hypocrisies in her mind, you know? And it's like I've said all along with her. She she thinks that if she goes all around the world and she keeps freeing all these people from different forms of bondage, right, that she'll be known as the great liberator. But eventually, if you kill enough people, you're going to kill people that maybe you shouldn't have. And all it really takes is a couple of those, and then that completely changes people's perception of what you are. And right. it's just one of those things, man. It's really easy to say she's a horrible tyrant, and I guess in a way she is, for sure. But in her mind, you know, like she thought, you know, this is a decent this is a decent reality, but this is going to go on for the next thousand years if I don't change it. Yeah. And it's not a good enough reality. It could be so much better. We could set a new normal for the next thousand years. So I understand why that's really tempting. So Right. I totally see what you're saying with that. Right. Was you sad when John killed her? Yes. Yeah. Which wait, weren't we going in order? I'm just asking, was you sad? Yes. We're trying to go in order, but uh, Yes, I was like I was extremely sad, but you know, that was the fairy tale I wanted was him and Daenerys to be ruling side by side. But when she burnt King's Landing, you could tell it was not there was no turning back. You cannot head in that direction once you've done that much destruction. So, to be honest, I didn't really know how else than to Daenerys have to get, like, I didn't really want her to get stabbed by John, but I, I felt like as after that moment, she couldn't be the ruler. Well, at that moment, John just realized nothing's going to stop her. Right. And that's what Arya said to John. Uh, right. John, when Daenerys walked away, Arya and John had a great conversation, and she's basically saying, dude, you're a Targaryen. Like, you're the threat, always. And I know she, like, loves you and all, but what happens when you guys have a fight and it becomes about who's going to rule or who people are loyal to? She's going to have you murdered and executed. Right. And, I mean, John, if that doesn't make you a believer, I don't know what does. And plenty of people forever, because even Bran, I'm sorry to jump to the end where he's, like, the master of whispers. Like, people are always going to come to John and be like, that's really you, dude. Like, that's really your... Thing, no matter what so that's just always going to be something right yeah for sure and then another thing is when Daenerys is giving her speech Tyrion chooses that moment in front of the whole entire army to take it off and show right. her up and I, I understand it was an emotional decision because he was so upset and I think the visual of seeing Cersei and Jaime really right. really got to him really got to him man yeah. and he knew they were going to die I mean he knew but but see, he knew they were going to die when he turned on Barris at that point. Right. So he, I don't know, maybe it was just a case of he was so locked in that mm-hmm. he just didn't think that he could make a different decision. But 
it was really it was just really sad to see him go through and i know he made a lot of horrible mistakes but at least the best case scenario is they left him out of the history book because yeah. history probably wouldn't have been kind to him he would have probably <laughs> been the biggest fool right the dumbest lannister the biggest betrayer um a man of no honor everything you could throw on Tyrion. that's probably what they would have gave him so um yeah he decided to show her up in front of everyone and he maybe could have waited for a more opportune time maybe tried to poison her something but i know they mentioned before she wasn't eating right but then ultimately john went up there and stabbed her up dude i mean shoot what do you want us to say i don't know he went up there and killed her i thought that part was you know i'll be honest with you guys i thought it was a little weak because the dragon security system i mean it's not it's not perfect you know it's targaryen you can walk right in so well yeah he said you straight you straight (laughs) yeah he was like a bouncer but then at the end of the day john goes in there stuff but i mean if you're john what do you do like what do you do for real right he had to kill her man he had to go up there and he had to end that um i thought it was great the best part of the show well not the best part of the show that's hard to say one of the best parts of the show is Tyrion was saying all over the world she goes and she frees people and they cheer her name and the more and more right. sure of herself she becomes. And she's also someone who believes she has a destiny. So how can you mm-hmm. tell her anything, you know? Right. It's just like that's just it's just so hard to tell somebody when they when they really feel like they're achieving a destiny. That's that's really hard in everything that sh- like the cheering I felt like at that speech was just more validation of her destiny. You know what I'm saying? She had that when she was in Essos. And she gained it back over here, and it, it there's just no stopping her from there. Well, not only that, she saw that in a in a vision. Yeah. So she did. You know, like if she didn't see that in a vision, she would think, "Oh my god, this is horrific. What am I doing?" But in her mind, she's like, "Well, this is what I was supposed to do." And it was do. played out like right. everything from the from the snow falling type. Thing. One thing I can tell you guys, man, is the first five minutes of this probably outro was absolutely terrible. But the reason why is because we were trying to follow a script. And to be honest, guys, not really a script, but we wrote down everything that happened in orders just because we wanted to make sure we hit all the plot points. And it just felt so awkward. Like, it was just so awkward at first, wasn't it? Like I talking. told you. I tried to tell you that before. I just didn't want to miss any of this stuff. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. I definitely get what you're saying. Uh, so, yeah, if I look down and just look at it, man, it's just because I'm trying to make sure I keep stuff in order. So, <laughs> yeah, Dragon Lesson John in. Or yeah, Dragon Lesh lets the John in. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Lesh John in. Right. John kills Danny. In that moment, I kinda I kinda like figured it was gonna happen because John walks up just full strap right. up, baby. I mean, he's got swords to the yin yang. <laughs> and I was like, bro, if one don't end up in Danny, I'll be highly disappointed. Right. You'll always be McQueen. <sighs> right. And which was nuts, but I do wanna say that part was extremely sad to me because I didn't want to see Danny go out like that. If you want me to be completely honest, I don't. I don't know how I wanted to see it happen. I know it had to happen, but I don't want. I don't know how. Like that's the thing about this. There's no like. I don't think they could have wrote an ending for any one person to be completely satisfied. Like I feel like in some way you had to be a little disappointed because how could it really end? You know, someone had to be disappointed, and that's what I was most disappointed in was just Danny's ending. I don't, but. My other part of that is I have no better ending to offer. <laughs> so I'm disappointed, but I have no nothing else best to give. If <laughs> I feel like if they would have made Danny's arc that she came over, she restored this wonderful, beautiful vision of what life could be. Right. I feel but like, I'm saying after she did all that. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I feel like that just wouldn't have been realistic. I mean, at best, she would have came over and you know she would have found herself in scandal or something do you get what i'm trying to say right it just wasn't gonna end pretty i guess well, I feel in like hindsight for her to actually do all that i feel like they would have had to build up a little more of her being rebellious in a way because that that was just like an extreme i guess like yeah. i see randall and and dick on her burning them was one thing but it wasn't as extreme as burning all of king's landing to me right i mean and, and that's to me was a little bit like Okay, maybe maybe if she kept doing things like that, like the Randall and Dickon thing, I would suspect her to do something like that. And I know a lot of people say it's an unpopular opinion. I saw in the comments on Patreon, of course, that they seen that she was going to do that. But as a first time watcher, no, I did not really pick up on that too much. That you're saying that they knew she was going to burn them? Yeah, well, a lot of our Patreon comments said, like, if we were paying attention, we would have always seen it. 
Like we would know that that was because the visions were saying it. La 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 la. Oh, that Danny was gonna go psycho. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Like I had the hint that she would. I mean, the whole I show just was, was hoping saying that she was gonna do better the whole time. That's my. That's what my the whole, un, my naive ass was thinking. Well, the whole point of Danny's character. I mean, at least I thought like from the beginning. I thought the whole point of her character was she came from a line. She is basically from a line of secession where you grow up and then you, you know, as you mature, you either realize you're crazy or you're not. Right. You know, and it, it doesn't happen when you're a child. It's not like you're just born crazy. It happens like in adulthood. Right. And so I thought we was just seeing what was going to happen. And I thought Viserys was the example of the chaotic side that she was going to not be. That's what I thought. That's what I literally thought coming into this like well, whole series. I don't know, man, because very early on, and I understand that her brother was absolutely disgusting, and I and I get that, right? But early on, you know, they really poured gold down his face, and she didn't even bat an eye. So I thought that's a little cuckoo, right? But I also knew he sucked. Like when and he she's said a that, when she he said that phrase, blood, you know? right? But at the time, I didn't know that. I barely knew anything about her. So as a first time watcher. I see that you guys think that maybe we should have known that, which, but for me personally, maybe not you, but for me personally, it wasn't something that I thought, I thought when they rang the bells, I thought that maybe something good was going to happen, but you know, I you don't know, know. I guess the thing about Danny is there's two trains of thought with Danny and a lot of people hated me because my Danny opinions, but you look at Danny and you either see a liberator or you see a conqueror. And I saw a conqueror. I saw someone who was, she was freeing people, but she was freeing them because she was trying to fulfill her own ends in a sense. She thought she had a destiny and, you know, everyone is basically driven by their purpose in some sense. So, you know, she just thought she was a purpose. So in a sense, I always thought she was self-filling or like, you know, doing it for herself in a way. I'm not saying that her intentions weren't great and that she really cared for these people because I knew and she it was. Did, but and it did good for people at the same time. The whole show early on was every everything you do, even when you think you're doing something right, Ned Stark it's going to end up backfiring on you because reality doesn't just allow you to walk around being all perfect all the time. You know, right. like it's just not like that, except when it came to Danny, her story was just too good to be true. Oh, she's free and everyone. Right. She's perfect. And I, and I see that too. Cause, but it's like, but she did have her obstacles. Like there was a time where she was starving with the, after Cal Drogo died, like there was times where she had him. So I was thinking she was going through these struggles to come out and help. I thought it was going to be a story of Westeros finally getting it, but that would be a perfect one, you know? And and it wasn't. The Game of Thrones isn't perfect. We know it always is going to throw you off. That's the point. Well, like I said, I just thought that there was all these people with extremely large ambitions who are willing to do a lot of really horrific things. And, you know, Littlefinger was conniving and scheming and, and stuff. And when he died, we cheered. You know, everyone was so happy for it. But when Daenerys would do the same thing, she would do it on like a way bigger scale with dragons and we cheered. So, right. I, but I, I loved her character because I, I think that she represents like the good in people. But the problem is the good in people often leads to like terrible things, you know, and sometimes it's unintentional. And I think that's sort of what she represented in the story. And it wasn't and it wasn't that she just had like an impulse control problem or nothing. It, it was just that when you do really ambitious things like trying to conquer nations and stuff, you find yourself having to make extremely impossible decisions that you normally wouldn't have to find yourself to make. Like, do I completely torch this place or do I murder Dickon and his dad? Do I do that? Like, I understand put him in a cage, but you, how many people can you put in a cage? Right. So like, until you have people? so many prisoners, you know, they're willing to die. And you're going to say that a cage is going to do the trick. They're thinking, Oh, well you can't put us all in cages. You know what right. I'm saying? Well, if you do, Oh yeah, sure. We'll be good. And then five minutes later, we're stabbing your unsullied. And she was just in an impossible situation, I think. And I feel bad for Danny. I think her character arc was pretty incredible. Actually, I thought she was a great actress, and I thought her character mm -hmm. was insane. But you know, I think the story was better that she turned. I really right. do. I, in a way, I kind of do too. So because if she gets the throne, I don't know how the story can make it any different. Right? Because then in the in a perfect world, like you know, I said, John and Danny rule together. La la la. Then I feel like the wheel's never broken because then everyone's gonna be telling John in his ear, "Hey, you really deserve it. Like you should totally like kill your wife." And it's just gonna be like stuff like that all the time. Right. That's what I was saying with Daenerys. Like all she was really doing was just resetting the narrative. It wasn't that she was really changing much. She was just doing it with a different message yeah. and with a different cast of characters. She basically took 
those who were on top and she basically put them on the bottom and she just basically flipped the script she didn't really change it she just right because changed, like, flipped i it. think by in the in the bells i think when she was giving gendry river run that was kind of her saying like sure i'm gonna break the wheel or whatever but here's the will by me giving you a land you know what i'm saying it's kind of like the the houses are still gonna be great houses well i think she went over there and realized that you know, she doesn't have this amazing plan that she maybe thought she did. Like right. these people are just doing the best they can do, and and that's what they know. So if you if that's what exactly. they know, how unless you have these great plans written out, how are we gonna like promote these? Like the you idea don't even know that who your successor is yet. The idea that oh, we should break these lands into tiny little subplots of land, and everyone should just be able to buy one, and then that's just your land, and no one rules, and we. Like, that's just such a foreign thought to these people, right? And and with their with their mindset and where they where they are as a people and as a, like a society, they're just too violent for that. Like that would just never work, right? That would never work. So, um, in some sense, you need fire and blood. Another thing that completely popped in my mind, you know how all the symbolism of all the swirls and stuff, mm -hmm. the army of the dead. Maybe in the end, they was trying to warn against Daenerys and the Targaryens. Right. Which Maybe they the whole were the time I thought threat. that's what, like it looked always looked like that to me. But then when I heard Melisandre say, this is I brought fire and ice together. I thought that was just like they were the same symbol, but alternate because fire and ice. Yeah, absolutely. but but you could be you could be totally right. They could have been warning them, which maybe the Targaryens are the trouble. Hmm. So when Jon stabbed Daenerys, man. She didn't she didn't say anything in that moment, which was one thing that I noticed in the moment was she didn't get any last words. Mm -mm, not even one. That well, was shocking. It was almost like it was almost like in her last moment, she was out of it. She wasn't herself because she was so euphoric when she was talking to John. It yeah. Was like and she, she was, was like, oh, when I was a little girl, la, 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 la. And he's like, yeah, but the people in the streets, I don't give a damn what you're saying. She's like extremely nostalgic yeah. in that moment. I love the dialogue between them. What is a thousand swords in the mind of a little girl who can barely count to 20? Yeah. Uh, I thought that was pretty incredible because it just really brought me back, you know, to my childhood and circum certain situations that I can recall in that moment. And when John stabbed her, I really wish that I just wish she would have said something. I don't know what she could have said, but. Right. Maybe, maybe her she destiny could've... was fulfilled. I don't know. Maybe she should have said, like, I have so much left to do. or I just wish she would have said something. Right. But she didn't say anything. And and it just, it was a really sad moment, man, because it, when he stabbed her, I just knew in that moment, like, a part of me knew that this story's over. Yeah, in a it's sense. just done. Like, it's just done. Yeah. Like, and all the good moments, all the bad moments, it's almost like they were for nothing, which obviously isn't true. You know, that's a really naive way to look at it. But the dragon got pissed. He screamed at John. Uh, decided to spare him. I guess it's because he was the last Targaryen. Right. And even though he was probably extremely angry at Jon, you know, maybe the dragon just deep in his DNA just isn't capable of destroying a Targaryen. I don't really know. Maybe in the House of Dragons, dragons will kill Targaryens. But, but they say how smart they are. So obviously, like, the dragon just knew, Maybe they were just smarter than everybody else. And That's a plot hole for me because I'm thinking if you're <laughs> so smart, why are you letting John in with his weapons? You should have unarmed him. Right. Or you should have just not let him in because you should have recognized, like... Maybe you should have had enough logic to recognize that maybe John's not down with that, you know? Yeah. If you're so, you know, they're saying that they're so much smarter than people. That's all I'm saying. Um, maybe they're smarter, more intelligent, but they're not socially smarter because they're dragons. Yeah, that's true. And then uh, they burn the throne, basically. Right. How do you feel about that? I felt like. I felt like it was what you're supposed to do. Like she wanted, that was her destiny was to break the wheel and there it went. Like, that's what I said. I felt like her destiny fulfilled. So if you're like looking back at Daenerys' character, the she did what she needed to do in that sense. Yeah, she did destroy that throne. But uh, it just sucks that she destroys it and then doesn't get to carry on the legacy of it afterwards. Basically, it, when she's destroyed, that's the whole, you know, it's like the the stepping stone for the the will to be broken. <laughs> it really played into like the prophecy. Yeah, a that's lot. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, she definitely fulfilled her destiny. Um, it was definitely a show that battled with free will and determinism a lot. And in a lot of ways, it was all about free will and, you know, what decisions you make right now matter. And then in a lot of ways, it was about what the Lord of Light wanted and what prophecy said. Right. So I think that was a really interesting mix of both. I think mm -hmm. that 
and how you interpret the messages of certain prophecies was also came into play, which right. was interesting because that was a whole aspect throughout the seasons, which was honestly incredible if you want to look at it like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. The dragon killing the throne or destroying the throne was good. It was just, it just felt like, I don't know. It just felt like they'll just rebuild it. You get what I'm right. saying? Which they essentially kind of are. Maybe I'm just struggling to talk because I'm just not sure how to feel about what we just saw. Right, um, because I told you it's mixed emotions. It's it was a really long episode, but it kind of dragged on in a yeah. sense. Like I wanted there to be a lot more happening, but Tyrion walked around the city for like 20 minutes. Basically, man, the dragon destroyed the throne. Uh, so that's great. I feel like they'll rebuild it. They essentially did by reelecting a new king. So yeah. I don't really feel like too much change. There's questions with that. Uh, the unsoul leader pissed off at John because John killed the queen. So eventually they decide that he has to go take the take the black. But he says, bump that. I'm going to go right past that and go into the north. So right. John rides off into the north, which... I don't really hate. I think maybe I like that moment. Honestly, I really did. I felt like John should have been the king. But then as I watched the series progress, I understand why he wasn't right. I always wanted to be the king, too. I really did. But when he bent the knee to Daenerys, it kind of felt like really he does not want that. You know what I'm saying? And another thing about being king is going to be he's going to have to sit here and fight narratives for life. Right. Oh, you're the queen slayer. You did this. You betrayed your queen to become king. And I just think John was just honestly just exhausted of fighting at right. that point. I think killing Daenerys was his last battle. I think he was okay with that. He just wanted to go right off in the north. Right. He would either there. have to be like full Aegon from now on or just not. Yeah. Which would be stupid, you know? Like he that's not him. And he chose to be John. John yeah. in the north. I really like that moment. I feel like I'm maybe I would have liked it more if John would have became king, but they would have had to rewrite the story. Right. I think that you know, if he would have never had that Targaryen turn and that basically that split loyalty, then I'd have felt stronger. But I really, really like the way they ended John's character. I think that's the best character ending. But one thing I will say, when it comes to Jon Snow, especially how much he means to the North, man, bump the Unsullied. If it means going to war to not send Jon Snow North, or I'm going to wait till Grey Worm just rides off. <laughs> Which he went to go full circle in his in his story arc. Which is to be where Masan Masande was. Yeah, maybe he's trying no. to go find a Masande 2.0. Right, which honestly, that part right there is pretty nice. Like, I'm I'm happy he did that. I just wish, like, at the end, we didn't have to feel a little bitter about him. Which, right, which we did kind of did because I mean we could have just been like, yo, like, Daenerys is dead. Who? You, why are you even speaking at this thing? Like, Tyrion's in chains and making the rules. Could you imagine though? Could you imagine being Grey Worm fighting that those years? And then 30 years later, when it becomes a distant memory, no one cares about it. It's so long ago, your memories are misperceiving what even happened. And then you're just telling someone the story and just reminiscing and just, but do you get what I'm saying? Just the longing, like, I bet 30 years down the line, like you would do anything to just see Masande's face or yeah. to see Daenerys's face because it's eventually going to fade into legend. And I just really felt bad for Grey Worm in that moment because I just tried to put myself in his shoes and think, what would it be like to be him? And imagine just, you know, being surrounded by them and they're like your queens and the woman that you're like in love with and you have purpose and it's just the time to be alive in your life. And and then all of a sudden it's all it's over. Like it's just gone. The rug gets pulled out from under. I would you. want John dead too. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you know, everyone has their own like and all the actions that happen. You can understand why people feel the way they feel like and. From Absolutely. Grey Worm's point of view, you can totally see that because if I if I got beheaded by Cersei Lannister, would you hate the Lannisters? Yeah, absolutely, I would. I mean, especially if you had to see it, if you were standing like there witnessing it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's really tough. It, it is tough. It's it is tough. The only reason I hold Grey Worm to a higher standard than just an average angry soldier or a villager that maybe their wife was killed by an army is because he's. He's like, he's in there. He's one of the main characters. Right, he's like, been so important. When you're going to be one of the characters that are actually in the throne room making decisions, counseling the queen, like, you just have to have some higher form of awareness. Like, right. you just have to try your... I mean, I, and I know it's hard, but you just have to do your best to put yourself above... Right. I mean, he just defended violent, her to the end, and that's know. what you can expect from your Grey Worm. Yeah. I feel like that that turn... Like, his character did exactly what it needed to do, which was defend Daenerys. I mean... Maybe it was a little silly how they plotted it, though. I, I won't. 
I won't lie for that. You could easily turn, but the at that point though, Bran could easily turn the tables and say, "Okay, after after the war was over, you proceeded to murder innocent Lannister soldiers. Yeah. So also, you deserve to be, you know, whatever the case may be, a prisoner too, if you really want to, or you go take the right. blood or something, you know, something like that. Right. But obviously, they only did it because they was trying to prevent another huge war. Yeah. And they was trying to get off on the right foot of history. So mm-hmm. um, I can understand that. I guess I guess this partly does to the meeting where they decided to choose who was the next leader. And it was kind of cool to see all the different representations of or essentially the new seven kingdoms, like who was going to represent what. It was cool to see because there were some faces I had no idea who they were, but it was cool to see Ed Muir again. It was cool to see Robin Aaron again. Um, he was, was it? <laughs> I mean, you know, it was cool to see him. Was it not, cool to see Robin Aaron? It was cool though? not to see him crying or sucking at his mom's nipples. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it was cool to just see him, I guess, like a little grown, a little more mature, like ready to hear, be in the fold, I guess you could say. And it was really cool to see Sansa um, just tell Bran, well, after they voted for Bran, to tell Bran, you know, I'm, I'm, I want the North to be its own thing. And I really appreciated that because. That was an arc I feel like really got paid off. Yeah, the North's going to be... Sansa ain't paying for a drink for the next thousand years. I can tell you all right. that. I feel like uh, maybe a lot of other people should have spoke spoken up. Maybe I was thinking maybe the kingdoms would divide. Maybe they'd become like seven independent nations or something, yeah. you know? But I don't really know what would change if they'd done that because they would all just be at war with each other. Right. They'd probably have more of a reason to be at war. They'd have less of a reason to unite, actually. Um, I feel like Sansa was just doing that for like pre Torin times because you remember Torin's the one who knelt or whatever. So she's just trying to be because they were peaceful before that. They were like running a peaceful time. Mm-hmm. So I feel like she's just trying to parallel that, which I felt like if you want to look at it from that aspect, it was well, it was good in her in her arc. I feel like her ending was a good one. Yeah, I don't say everyone's was, but Sansa's was a good one. Hers was amazing because right. her poor family has been through so much. And then she suffered so much. And she was a survivor, man. I, I gave her a hard time at the beginning of the series because I thought that the way she was throwing herself at Joffrey was was dangerous. Right. And I thought that. I just thought it was dangerous, man. And I understand she was a little girl, so I'm not right. going to. Re- redo all that but i just thought that maybe she should have had more awareness of the positions that she was putting her family in and the fire that she was playing with but she maybe ended she up didn't realize the fire because when you're little maybe you just don't realize it but, and she didn't realize it yeah. she was just a young girl but she came a long way man she went through so much all she, the way to queen in the north and that was insane to hear her her legacy will be maybe the greatest in the stark family because she restored independence mm. to the starks after after probably the most brutal you know the song of ice and fire that's the era of the ice and fire so right. that was one of the toughest eras probably and i think what daenerys did to that capital will they'll sing about that for a thousand years right. that's for sure and i think sansa will go down in history as definitely one of the strongest women in stark history so yes. pretty incredible to see her journey uh aria too though aria is just a strong ass stark girl she'll herself. probably she'll probably carry the stark family name to west of westeros right maybe the starks will become the biggest kingdom in the whole world one day because mm-hmm. of Arya. who knows and one's on the throne but even though he's really not a stark but you know what i'm saying i love that Arya chose life in the end you know she chose to just go do her man go get away go live her life she basically retired before she even was like 23 so that's what's up <laughs> good job Arya. <laughs> right she earned that what an amazing character Arya was though mm-hmm. like the seeing her grow up into this you know assassin girl was honestly one of the best stories in the whole game of thrones like beautiful her interactions with everyone was incredible just i mean it's weird that jock and high guard was not even relevant in the last three seasons you know what i'm saying because he played such an important role seasons one through four so it was just weird you know to not see him anymore but he played but a big role in her life i will say it's sad that you mentioned that because the moment you said that I thought about how important his character was and how much it was helping to develop the story, which essentially right. helped develop Arya, which became such a huge moment in the story. And then, like I said, he had his role to play. And then just like that, he was gone. Right. And that reminded me of Daenerys Targaryen. And, you know, she she had a role to play, too. And then just like that, she's gone. And it just seems like she was literally there to to destroy everything for them to rebuild. Right. Basically right yeah she was like her own apocalypse 
I just think her story is so tragic. And I, yeah. I really feel so bad for Grey Worm because he's alive. And I feel like, I guess that's what I was trying to say. She came and went so fast from right. his perspective. It was yeah. a blink of an eye. And she really gave him a reason to believe in something. She really rescued a lot of people. And that's what I'm trying to say. Daenerys Targaryen was a very complicated character. And I do believe she had a good heart. Right. And she had the best intentions. But guys. But he's still free now. Yeah. And he is. He freed and her. She, she freed him. He's just going to have a long, long, sad life, man. Yeah. I feel bad for that dude, man. He's going to be like that pirate guy, probably. Yeah. He's going to be like freaking the hound, just bitter. Yeah. Old and bitter forever. What else happened, guys? Well, well at the meeting, um, remember Sam brings up democracy, basically, and everyone laughs at his ass. They're like, <laughs> they're like, dude, what are you talking about? Perhaps I'll let my horse have a vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. Um, cause he, he might've had the best idea. Democracy is not perfect though. We all know that, but. Right. And you know, I guess, I guess they decided with Tyrion and Chains that the Lords and the ladies are going to vote for the leader after Bran, but you know, Bran, if, that could be chaotic though, but Bran's supposed to remember the first guy lived for thousands of years before him. So, but maybe that's only if he's connected to those. Well, trees. let's talk know. about the Bran thing. That kind of weirded me out because right. I thought the whole point of Bran was he just knew things like he had. He could, he basically could access the universe through every perspective. So, right. Like I literally, when I pictured him, I thought of him like as a Dr. Strange type character who just right. could see every possible thing, every which, which way. He essentially was kind of playing God in a way. And it makes me wonder, did he allow all that to happen so he could become king? Was he just being like Littlefinger the whole time? Was he the greatest Right, because when he made that comment, you said, remember at the that meeting in the Dragon Pit, when he made that comment, when he was like, I wouldn't have came all the way here, something like that, was it? Right. And that was just like, what? Right. Like, and the what? other guy, the other guy sat in the tree for, what, a thousand years or something? Right. So maybe Bran, and then Bran made the comment about the dragon. Perhaps I can see later or something like that. Like, what's he going to use that dragon for? Right. Like, Brand's just kind of weirded me it's out just because. There's a lot of mysteries behind Brand. And then he said the thing to John when they were doing the Lord of the Rings send off. Yeah. He said that thing to John about you were right where you were supposed to be. And it almost makes it seem like Brand knew the whole time that that city was going to get destroyed and all those people were going to die. And he sort of just let it happen. Right. And it's one of those things is, it's hard to judge because, I mean, who am I to say if that's right or not? But it's just, it just makes me really suspicious of him because. He gained power out of the whole but thing. But he like knows all this stuff and he doesn't stop it or say anything about it, which is, I mean, honestly though, I do think he he kind of did because he gave Arya that knife, the knife that ended the long night. So right. like when he did, I, I felt like w when I was thinking of that moment, maybe he does kind of help change the story. Yeah, maybe that's why he never wanted power because he always knew he'd end up with it. Like ultimate power. Oh, maybe. Do you get what I'm saying? So maybe, maybe because when because he died, he he went from Bran to the three eye. I to the third, baby. And uh he he basically lost his humanity at that point. Mm -hmm. So the idea that he would have a moral compass maybe he wouldn't, you know, like maybe right. he wouldn't at all. I don't know. So that part was really weird to me. I didn't really understand that part. Let me know in the comments below what I missed with that for sure. Right, and and, and him sending Jen, John off, the sorry, him sending John off and him saying you're right where you need to be or whatever, that was also like kind of saying like it's good. Like if you're looking at it from that aspect, maybe it's good for Bran because now the threat to the throne's gone past the wall. If you want to look at it like that, when he asked for the Master of Whispers and the other thing, it seemed like to me the Game of Thrones Precise. was starting over again yeah, did it did it not that's the, the game of thrones 2.0 <laughs> right it seemed like that's what i'm trying to say like nothing really changed like they might have melted the throne but nothing really changed man it's they like, went back to what they know which was like that <laughs> it almost seemed like daenerys was just a pawn in brand's game the whole time it could have been like if you guys want to think of it like that maybe it was brand's own game of throne but if it was you know that'd be cool but it just didn't really come off that way but it would it it, it did but didn't you know what i'm saying right huh you could look i don't know you could look at it through that glass i guess well maybe like we're sitting there thinking of the three eyes brand but maybe we're thinking of it wrong like maybe the three eye that was in the tree also knew that brand was going to be pushed out of the window because he was becoming old so maybe he was just looking for a new host right maybe the three eyes his own entity but, I mean, and yeah. it was just basically hosting inside of Bran. So Bran was long gone at that point. But they're right. sitting there still acting as if he's their brother. Yeah. And I don't think that's the case. 
Right, but Bran's also not acting like a brother. He's acting distant as if he's not. It's like he's, he's acting like he doesn't have any humanity. Right, he's, like he's made it very it clear about that. So that, that in my opinion, is a little scary to choose as your leader. But I think maybe they just don't understand the complexity of the Three-Eyed Raven like us as viewers do because they didn't see the, tri the triumphs and the tribulations of the Three-Eyed Raven. So for the people at the meeting maybe they just thought it was going to choose a neutral person so i thought my, that was a terrible choice well it was just that okay my choice that choice was strange and maybe i feel like if i dropped my baby on his head one? in front of brand he'd be like you've dropped your baby on its head i'd be like well thanks brand help me out like there's just no humanity in that right either. but he'll be like don't worry i'll bring it up when i see you in 30 I'll years record it in my records right right so he's basically the internet of the Monster Hunter, kind of <laughs> yeah, like right. Yeah. He knows everything. He said they even said marriage license and stuff like that. Man just keeps it all. So he's the archives. How does he have time to rule? I guess that's why he let Tyrion be the hand. He's basically like a cloud, right? And with unlimited storage, right? <laughs> so I guess in that meeting, also Tyrion decide Tyrion gets elected as hand of the king, which honestly he's just always been hand of something, you know constantly throughout this he's been back and forth with it which i think maybe that was a cool you know what i just thought what you know how he gives that bs reason for Tyrion? he's like well you're gonna spend your life fixing your mistakes right and you know i was like well Tyrion's an idiot well Tyrion's not an idiot right but i feel like in the end they kind of made him out to be really dumb and he was wrong every step of the way like he just kept making doof moments like do you within. think the reason brand chose Tyrion, even though he because he's all knowing and he has to know from Tyrion's mistake how much of a drunken goof he became mm -hmm. in so many ways. Do you think Bran chose Tyrion because he knows how easy it is to get over on Tyrion? Oh. And Bran just understands that if I choose Tyrion. Well, if you look at it from that way, possibly. Like maybe I that thought was it was more of like a Maybe punishment? that's why Bran is like the master of coin. Oh. Sam's a maester and all he really did was like rob some books. You oh know? my gosh, you guys. Okay, if you look at it from that way, maybe this ending was brilliant. Maybe he's like, maybe it's about to become even, Little maybe finger? that wasn't a happy ending at all. Oh maybe that was God. an extremely dark yes, ending. Maybe, maybe the, the darkest type Maybe the Three-Eyed Raven is something we don't know about, you guys. Maybe he's so dangerous. much worse. Yes. Maybe it's a dangerous entity. Maybe that's why the Night King was trying to kill him, because he was actually trying to save people. Ooh. Well, I'm, if just, you I'm look, just getting out there. I mean, guys, I if know. you look at it from that, that's pretty crazy, but you're right. You're right, because I really thought it was Tyrion getting, getting punished for all the Hand of the King nonsense jargon he's done i just don't really know how Tom i felt Fullery. about all that man i don't i don't know how i felt about all that uh just selecting a king choosing brand uh my my initial reaction was the writers were like giving themselves a pat on the back because they're like who better than a storyteller <laughs> i'm like oh, okay here we go yeah who better um <laughs> who better give me an academy award <laughs> right absolutely or an emmy whatever you get comment below <laughs> but um to be honest, I don't, it was slim pickings. That's why I said that. I don't really know who you're supposed to pick. Like, Brienne would be great, but like, is she supposed to be the queen? I don't know. Like, she's it's amazing. Weird. It's but tough, it's, you guys. That's what I'm saying. It's, everyone wants to hate on who the leader is, but if you look around at the landscape, there's really not a lot of good people. So, I mean, John, if, if it can't be John, then who? That's what I'm saying. That's that, that, that was the choice we were left with. So, how can any of us be mad? How can any of us be happy? I guess we all have to just be like, neutral and then the saddest part to me man you know what i'm about to say the part that just made me tear up brianne oh yeah the book brianne writing the in the book. white book man oh my god that was by far like she always has just the best moments she really does so which could make her arguably one of the best characters for real just another tragic character uh another one of those things man that like Sir Jamie came into her life and meant so much to her. And it all just, I know it was a long time, but it went by so, maybe it's just because we watched the series, but it went by so fast. And that's the thing that hurts the most is there's so much life for her to live still. There's so much yeah. left for her to do. Her story's really just beginning in a sense. Like she's getting Jamie's job essentially in this new role. And it's so cool. And every single day is a reminder of Jamie. And right. Jamie means so much more to her. And I just thought that part was so sad. I don't know. And she wrote, much. and she wrote that he died protecting his queen, which was essentially very beautiful because she could have wrote whatever, 
Because he broke her heart, he left her, he did all that to her. But she could have wrote so much less and still been considered gracious, but she went above and beyond. And because that's who she's she was. Brand. That's because who she's she was. Yes, and that reminds me of on the Green Mile, and you know Tom Hanks could have given people all this hoopla at the end of their life, but he didn't because he's a good person. Right. She definitely acted with class and grace in that moment, and that's why we love Brianna Tar. So, um, her and Jamie's love story was probably like the best in the series i thought that theirs was good <laughs> are you about to cry talking about it <laughs> yes you are <laughs> yes you are no i'm not it impossible was, it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing it. it was amazing guys their their story was incredible the knighting of brian was oh my gosh top tier some of the best game. I can't wait for us to, because tomorrow, guys, we're going to get into our best moments because we're, we're going to write them down and actually think about them. But also those videos you guys are going to send, but I'm getting ahead of myself on that. But when it comes to Brienne, I think her moment at the end, writing in the white book, getting her shot at being like the leader of, what is it? The leader, the Lord Commander of the kingsguard or mm -hmm. something yeah her her getting that was amazing I, I absolutely feel like that was well written and deserved yeah that was definitely probably the most emotional part it was definitely the most emotional part because i mean it was in the end like everyone's dead you know so obviously a lot of emotional parts in the series but that one definitely had the most finality to it so mm -hmm. uh really nostalgic of the characters i'm gonna miss jamie lannister a lot it was an awesome character just so many awesome here. Just good moment. Just this 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 series was so good, you guys. Patreon, thank you so much for voting for it. Even though you guys are goats because y'all said put it on YouTube. Right. Best decision we ever made. I mean, not really for our channel or anything like that. I mean, it was a good decision and all that, but just because we got to share it with you people, and mm -hmm. I think that the experience of getting it on YouTube and editing it and making the thumbnails for it and just the whole nine yards that goes into YouTube opposed to Patreon. It's just it was it made it so much of an experience that it right. wasn't so I just and you just get, get so attached to it yeah yeah absolutely so so attached um yeah and then the small council meeting happens and like I said I thought it was ridiculous that Braun was the master of coin yeah but who knows man maybe he'll be great at it maybe he's just a man who needs actual responsibility well he got his debts paid I guess that was the point of that that was like you know some some full circle for him because he's been sitting here doing all this junk for the Lannisters, never getting anything. Yeah, and then true. here he goes getting that plus more because you're now on the small council. Yeah. So you're you're pretty good. Good job, Ron. <laughs> definitely. I mean, I, you definitely did something special, man. You moved up for sure. Went from sellsword to master of coins. So <laughs> congratulations. It's basically Tyrion's old up. job. Tyrion will probably be giving him hell about it because it's yeah. just his old job. So yeah. <laughs> but good job on that, man. And then. Uh, I just wanted to point out again, I thought it was so sick that Sansa basically freed the North because right. it was really important. It was really important to Rob and uh, to Catelyn Stark to win that war because they were tired of basically being encroached on by the Southern ways of this world, man. They just wanted to right. live the Northern way of life. They wanted to live and die the Stark way. And not having to fight wars for men they don't really give two shits about. And they could never really find their way out of conflict because of geography. So, um the way the universe was or the way the world was structured it was just always at the center of it but at least now the decisions that the starks make good bad and different whether the consequences are good or bad uh hopefully sansa does a good job and her line does a good job but at least there will be their decisions to make and no longer will you know a king march into king's landing and demand their dad demand that their dad drop everything march south just to go get beheaded so hopefully those days are over i thought it was amazing to see and right. Uh, basically, John wrote off and just became normal. So that was Game of Thrones, man. Incredible show. That episode was insane. But that was just that episode. This series as a whole was pretty incredible. It was definitely my favorite show. I don't, I've don't. i I've never seen anything I even think is close to this, to no, be honest. And just like how complex, how complex the characters, how complex the world building was. It was incredible. Right. Like, guys, like, I've never seen something so visually stunning. The costumes... I could go on the music, the, the lore, like even learning the lore made it even more special because you get to see every little every little detail mattered in the show. Every dialogue mattered. It was beautiful. Incredible. It, show. it was. It was an incredible show. I think uh, 
I don't know where it came from. I don't know. Maybe the dude just fell asleep one day and it all just popped into his head. Maybe it was just years of writing and refining, but whatever it is, man, it was definitely a gift. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this with us, guys. This show was absolutely incredible. We're going to come back and we're going to share some more thoughts and we're going to make that video and probably put it on the end of this one. We'll probably blabber for another 30, 40 minutes, but I don't really want to get off the mic because I'm going to miss this show. It yeah. And that's how I feel about the ending of things. Like you just don't want to leave the outros because then it's over and then we just don't have it anymore. Sorry. Our outro was a little rough today. Probably one of our rougher outros, but honestly it's because my brain mentally was just all over the place. I felt really sad. I didn't really want to record the outro. I didn't really want it to be over. And but we had to be raw with words. it. We wanted to show exactly how we felt after, and that's the truth. Yeah. So incredible show. I will say one last time, I'll reiterate. Uh, if you guys wonder if we're going to miss this show, I just want y'all to know we will. We <laughs> will. We will. We will. Who's we your favorite character? Will. The whole, the whole, your absolute favorite character. If you had to pinpoint it right now, this second on the spot, go. Jamie. Jamie? You. Me? Jamie? You go. Me, my end of favorite character was Arya. Arya was awesome. Right. I just had to say Arya because I just, I loved her. Like, I, I loved her from the beginning. Sorry, I felt so judged. You're like, Jamie, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. No, I just, I, I really didn't expect you to say that. I was I was either gonna say Arya or John. Well, I mean the problem with John, the problem with John is I don't really know how much nobility there is in running away from your destiny. I guess like I, I don't know what his destiny was. Maybe he fulfilled it. Maybe his destiny was to go north. Maybe John's destiny was to. I don't know, man. I just felt like John was someone who was just really trying to. You know, that's not even fair to say, man. You really do got me on the spot. Because I, I mean, just it's tough. About, like, that's what I'm saying. I said Arya uh, immediately, but then I was like, dude, I don't know. I really like John's character. I started to badmouth John because the end, but then I realized I remembered his story and what it was. And then I remembered I can't badmouth John. John's the goat. Right. Um, that was, he is such, they just all have such good stories. But you put me on the spot. Even Davos, I could say, was one of my favorite characters. Like, God dang, man. I don't want to do that. <laughs> can I not do that? Can I say Arya and John and Sansa and all of them? <laughs> Cause that was a show that made the show so good as there are so many characters. When you ask who your favorite one is, I feel like I'm cheating by saying one of them. I feel like it hurts me. Like, just like in the Avengers. Like I didn't like saying one of the Avengers cause I didn't want to offend another one, even though they don't care, but I care. Right. But that's how I feel about game of Thrones. Like I feel like I'm offending Brienne. I feel like I'm offending Jamie. I feel like, because they're all such good characters in their own ways. And they're all meant for this amazing series. Like, <clears throat> best series ever. Hmm. How about something easier? What was your favorite season? <laughs> favorite season? I don't know. I, let me just finish with Jamie. I think, well, I think the reason initially is because I feel like I'll miss the character the most just on a gut level. But then I got to thinking, like, what are the most emotional moments of the series? And I thought it was Jamie and Brienne. And I think that their story and far as far as like love stories, I think theirs was the best. Right. Right. And so, you know, just, it was a very unconventional love story, well, but one at one at best. The love was really important. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that happened in this story was because of love and loyalty. Yes. So I thought that Jamie was just such a conflicted character and it's hard to pinpoint why I like Jamie so much, but it's, it's, it's a close race. I'll put it that way. So many characters were great. There's, I feel like with John, it, it would have been John, but I feel like John was just a little too anxious to give away his power. You know, I feel like he didn't he didn't choose to be king in the north. He he was chosen to be king in the north, and I understand he was just doing the best he could do. But you know, ultimately, John's decisions led to that. All their decisions led to something, man. It's hard to say, but Jamie's character was great. I think just as equally number two, I would say Tyrion. I don't, oh, I don't oh know why I don't know why I said Jamie over Tyrion to be honest. They were both That's what I'm incredible. saying. It's hard when you say it. It's you, it's, it's hard. impossible. It's, it's so hard. That's what, and guys, that's what makes this show that dang good is just how hard it is. It just how complicated everything is. That's what I love about Game of Thrones and that's why I'll never forget about this. It's just you can go into an episode thinking it's one way and it will come out the other. And it's just, and it could have been a main character that got killed off, but it still became just so good from one episode to the next. 
Yeah, it was good, man. Favorite, I'll never forget it. Favorite season? Hmm. That's hard to say, man. My favorite season is always the one we just got done watching for sure because mm-hmm. it's the freshest one. I don't have a favorite season because, and you know, in my mind, I would love to say, oh, I think season one or season two or season three, but in season two, Jamie wasn't Jamie. Right. But in season, you know, in season four, Brienne wasn't Brienne, you know. Right. A lot of people don't love this season, but these characters are who they are in this season. Right. They're their final forms and good, bad, or ugly, this, you know, is who they became. So, um, Right. When you look at it from that standpoint, it's, it's hard to it's, say, it man. is hard, it's to, so say, hard but to say, but I would say for me of my favorite season and I only know because I feel like there was times when I'll jump into an episode and just be like my heart would be like pulsing because I just the writing was so like insane. I feel like season four to me was it like it was just so stressful 24 seven. And then it was just my favorite in that sense. But at, you're right. As these characters grew, I started to love the seasons more. So I got more invested. So right. even when the writing fell off, I cared more about the characters. Yes. So it didn't really matter to me. Right. That and that, and that's exactly how I feel too. So I agree with you in that standpoint, but I'm just saying like, I just remember in season four, there being a sense of just like, I don't know when everyone was so about their houses and about this game of Thrones, something about it to me was just, I, I loved it. It was, it was top tier in that season. In my opinion, I agree with you. It, it was the, it was the best political season yes right because it did start out a movie or a series about politics and dialogue Mm -hmm. and you know it's like i said before every eye movement matters every every purse of the lips mattered and you know like i said the show did get away from that it lost a little bit of his realism in that sense but well yeah sometimes the offenses of some people weren't they were really strong in the beginning and then as the seasons went on like i guess well and you know more was happening because there was like the long night that was happening like, of course, a lot of that stuff happens to make it like less. But, you know, as it went on, it just felt like some of those really strong um, political thing or even just like some of your house, like, you know, your customs and stuff. All, some of that stuff kind of fell off to me. But yeah, but to be but to be 100 percent fair, I would probably say that my favorite season was this one, the one that we just watched. Only and only because, man, we got to see the final forms of all these characters, Um, which which it was a fast. No, there's no harm, no foul in saying season eight's your favorite. Uh, You know, one thing I will say, uh, the Iron Throne and the Bells, these two episodes was by far my favorite two episodes back to back. And I know they're the episodes where they all fall apart and all that. And I get that. And if you're someone who feels that way, you know what I'm saying? Feel free to, you know, no hate for you. But. And, and in a lot of ways, man, the show could have went a lot of different ways, you know, and I agree with that. But I just thought it was still so good, man. I, I thought that at the end of the day, the show probably just needed to wrap itself up. And I just thought if you're going to do it rushed, at least do it beautifully. And the shots were amazing. Yeah. And I know a lot of people probably don't love it, but I wouldn't have changed anything. And I, I look forward to watching it again. I, I can't wait to rewatch the series. And I, I almost guarantee when we watch this a second time tv shut off when we watch this a second time i'm gonna feel just as sad as i am now so uh babe you've asked me my favorite character favorite season what was the saddest death to you saddest death huh geez louise that's not on the spot can you answer first I, i would say for okay in the moment in the moment are you saying in the moment or which one was the saddest so like over the whole thing i'm I'm not saying i'm saying you personally like what death made you inside the saddest it doesn't have to be what everyone else thinks just you personally me personally it would definitely it definitely has to be ned's like because when that happened with me ned's death hurt me throughout the season because it hurt it kept being brought up so I, out of all the deaths that's the one that has stuck with me because it i felt it the longest mm-hmm what about you? I think Daenerys. I, I mean, really that one do. hurt, but it, it was at the end. I I got Ned's at the beginning, and it's done nothing but pay consequences throughout the whole series. I don't think hers was by any means the most shocking. Like, like as soon as John walked in there, I was like, here we go. You knew it had to happen. I just kind of knew it had to happen because yeah. at that point, I mean, after that speech she gave, like, you just, 
you have to stop her. And then Tyrion said, what you do now is the only thing that matters. So, but I just thought that was the saddest because everyone loved Danny, mm-hmm. you know? And even in that moment when Tyrion took off the hand of the queen, when the way Daenerys looked at him, I didn't look at it in that moment. I didn't see her as like a tyrant. Right. And I didn't see him as, you know, her future prisoner. I just saw two characters that we've really grown to understand and appreciate and care about. And I just felt like in that moment, as stupid as it was, I felt like even though Tyrion took it off, maybe he'll be okay because there's some humanity in Danny. Like we love Danny. We mm-hmm. know you. Like we're friends. Yeah. We hang out. Do we hang out? We hang out like three or four times a week, every week for months at this yeah. point, you know? <laughs> and I, I really just I just never lost the humanity for Danny. No, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it too. I was mad at her. You when know what when I'm all that King's Landing stuff, like, I was disappointed. Like, I was that's really how, disappointed in her. That's how, that's how I can approach that. I was disappointed in her. But at the same time, I really don't know. How, like I said, I have no better offer to make the story better, like how they ended it. You know I think the Mad Queen arch is amazing. I think that if she would have ended up just being some peaceful, great queen who solved everything, I think it would have been corny. That wouldn't be Game you know, of Thrones. It wouldn't be Game of Thrones. No. It wouldn't be realistic. I mean, here we are. We have all the technology on Earth. You know, people can eat. We can manufacture food out of chemicals. You know, no one has to starve like they used to. You know, especially, you know, especially in lots of places in the world. But here it's basically the Stone Age and they're trying to build utopia. I, I don't see it happening. So I, I do think that they were wise not to make that happen. I just think hers was the saddest man because even when John killed her, it was like he, we killed her because we had to, not because we wanted to. Right. And, and that's, that's, that's really how sucks. it felt. Yeah, and that does suck. Man, I just wish someone could have got to her. And I just wish maybe she could have understood that. It didn't have to be like that. It did just didn't have to be like yeah. that, man. Uh, and and this all this stuff she did, all her character did building up to this. It would have been nice for her to see the payoffs of it in a, in a good way, not in a bad way. Like, a, it would have been nice for it to go a better way but like i said what other what other way could it have went i don't know i don't know i just wish i'll miss her man she uh she's a tragic character in my mind um definitely one of the deepest and most complex characters Mm -hmm. i've ever seen one of my favorite characters i know you guys think that i don't like danny and i get it because i've been maybe a critic of her ambitions you know but i absolutely love her character uh the young lady who played her, I thought she did an amazing job Absolutely. staying in character. Like she killed that. Mm-hmm. And you know, in and, my she, mind, and she grew as the years went and absolutely nailed it. Like even through season one, when she was just this young little, little Khaleesi, and then she turns into this Danny in her final form. And it, she did incredible. Like that is a character that I'll always make references to and never forget. And she's someone that, You know, even though in the end she, even though in the end, guys, she did what she did, her message still matters, you know, Mm -hmm. and what she was saying isn't wrong. And she definitely, you know, if Jamie can have a happy ending, even though his death was terrible, you know, maybe it's not really about your death in your final moments. Maybe it's about the life you live. And I think Danny did a lot of good. I think she had a great heart. And I think she genuinely, with no guidance, the only family she had was a brother who told her that. He let a whole horde basically grape her before. Basically, man, she just didn't have any guidance, man. And I feel bad for her character. So I know we're starting House of Dragons. I'm so excited to get into some Targaryen action over there, learn more about the House of the Dragons and all that good stuff. I don't really know what the show's about, but it's about House of the Dragons. So Why we know it's about Targaryens. I know it's about Targaryens, yeah. and I'm not supposed to watch any Targaryen war. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to miss Danny. She's always going to be the goat Targaryen. I'm really nervous to get over there. Right, we're going to have to compare. Like, we're just going to feel like Danny. I'm not going to say compare. Let well, me I'm not gonna say still that mourn too. these. I'm still mourning these right. characters. It's going to take me. Dude, it's going to take me easily a month to get over the show. At least, at least a month. Right. And I wish we could have a break before we started House of Dragons because I don't want to sit and sit there and like judge these characters. You're no Amelia Clark. You know right. what I mean? But we're not going to do that. But. We're going to look at it as a sequel, Damn, right? I'm or is it a prequel or sequel? Prequel, well, right? Definitely a prequel. Right. We're going to look at it as a prequel um, and just enjoy it because uh, Game of Thrones was a was a treat. That was a great eight seasons. And I hope we get the same experience from House of the Dragon. I hope I hope the Targaryens get to, you know, 
be lived more throughout this series um because it we only got to see the last of them so right. it'll be nice to see them in their full form like when they're at their peak or so to say well guys uh I know this feels like finality, but the truth is, is we're going to come in and we're going to record another little session. We're going to re-talk about Game of Thrones and make one more little video for you guys. We're going to throw it on the end of this one. So this feels like the end for us. We're going to miss you guys a lot until tomorrow. Uh, then we can get back in it. But we need a day to get some perspective. I think after a day of letting it sit, we'll have a better understanding of what we just saw. And we'll be able to have a more insightful conversation. This one was a very raw, emotional conversation. I can't think... Every time I think of a character, I get a little like <laughs> sad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll miss the show. It's good to not be on this end of it right now because I've I've done cried every tear I can cry in Game of Thrones way. Thank you, Game of Thrones. You left me with a lot of tears the whole eight seasons. I cried more than I expected to. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. We'll see you on the next one. Yo, what's up, guys? So it's been how long? Like a week or two? It's been, yeah, something been like, like that. It's been like a week or two since we finished Game of Thrones. We are on House of the Dragon. We literally, literally just got done like 10 seconds ago. And we ago caught up. Catching up, man. So tomorrow will be Sunday at, uh, uh, by the time we're recording this. And we will be live, man. So we will be live with season two, episode two. I'm really liking the show, but we're not going to make it about House of the Dragons. And we're not going to really talk about it too much because I don't want to spoil anything for people out there who haven't seen it. But right. the one thing I will say about the show when you watch the show, and, and I know a lot of people really only care about the show and they don't really care so much about the books. I'm like, I totally get that. And I know a lot of people care about House of the Dragons and not so much, or they care about Game of Thrones and not so much House of the Dragons. Right. I get all that. But the reality is it, it, is, it all goes together. I mean, it right. is one world. To understand and one world, you understand the other. I think that if you see House of the Dragons, it'll help you understand Daenerys' character and it'll yes. give you a different perception on who she was as a person. Because just seeing like where she comes from, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Right. So it's really interesting, and in I I can see why they did like a prequel in a way. Right. To understand so. the Targaryens means a lot. So. Right. I do appreciate the prequel now that I we're do watching too. it. I so. do too. But guys, we just wanted to take a second, and like we said, we would do. We're gonna take like 15, 20 minutes maybe, and we're just gonna blabber. And basically, we've been sitting on it for about ten days or so, and we just wanted to share our final thoughts, what we thought about the series. There's been a lot of feedback. Um. Obviously, this episode is live now, so we didn't right. get the feedback on this one. But um, The Bells was the last episode we put out. And the reviews on that one was crazy. Right. Was it they not? were very up and down. To very divided. Everyone, yes, everyone was divided, right. I would say. What was what was your stance on that? What side were you on? <laughs> my, I mean, my, my thing is, is, it's hard to say, man, because there was a lot of things that I agreed with. There was a lot that I didn't. But one thing just right off the bat that I didn't really agree with, I didn't really think that they wasted Jamie's character. I think that's the biggest comment that we've right. gotten is that they destroyed Jamie's character arc. And in a sense, they did because everybody wanted to see everyone rooted for Jamie. And we all wanted to see him be with Brienne and become this noble person and all that. And and I get that. But the reason I really, really like that storyline is because the show did say it's not about your death, it's about your life, right? Mm -hmm. And even though Jamie decided to go back to Cersei, I just think my perception now is when he slept with Brienne that day, I don't think it's that he felt like, oh, I can't redeem myself, I'm unredeemable, I'm not right. worth, you know. I think, I think deep down he slept with Brienne. I just think he felt dirty, right. and I just think in his mind and his heart, like you know, I just think he just wanted to be with Cersei and. I don't know how else to explain that, but I don't think they ruined his character. I right. think sometimes in life, man, you know, everybody wants the drug addict to go to rehab and they want them to get better and they want them to change their life and then have a family and then talk about it 30 years later. Like it was a long story and it's so inspirational. We all want that. But sometimes the drug addict is clean for 20 years and then they fall back on it, dude. And then sometimes he did seem like an addiction to him. Right. And it was just one of those things where I, I, I appreciate that a lot of people wanted to see his character as did I. I totally ending. did want to see that. And I, I, I'm not going to lie about feeling a little disappointed about that a little bit. But also understanding that what he said to Edmure in that tent meant a lot to me um, in particular, because I felt like that meant a lot about Jamie's character. So sure, Jamie's doing this and Jamie's doing that. But at the end of the day, it was always for Cersei. Yeah. I Fighting mean, for the living for Cersei. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if Jamie would have just stayed with Brienne and all that, it have felt better, but I don't think I would have learned as much. Right. I mean, I felt like Jamie doing what he did actually made me have thought provoking. 
it just it was more thought provoking i should say i mean it really made me think about like what it means to love someone it made me think about like loyalty stuff like that yeah and i don't think they ruined jamie's character man i think jamie was still an amazing character in the show i think the highlights of his life were still just as meaningful i just think that sometimes man it just is what it is you love who you love and you know the only person he'd ever been with was cersei and i just think he just felt wrong you know it just right. the universe just did not spin correctly when he did that and i don't know why that is sometimes but sometimes you're just programmed that way and we're all like that. I mean, there's so many people out there who there's things in your life that hold you back or there's people who might not necessarily help help you become all you could be, but you love them. So you don't rid yourself of them. And I don't really think Jamie was any different, you know. And like as a human, I understand like we want to root against incest. True. I yeah. totally <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah, for sure. Um, but there's the, so many fish in this. Bro. <laughs> at the end of the day, I feel like that Cersei and Jamie dying together to me was I wouldn't have wanted it any different at the end of the day. I, I, I at first initially I kind of didn't, but when I'm looking back at the series, because we have been looking back at the series, like we've even, oh, this is embarrassing, but we've been playing some of the music. <laughs> it, it's just been a long week. You know, we've, this has been a show that's been really dear to us. So, um, awesome show. We get the passion, man. We get it. Right. So understanding the characters, I mean, just from a show aspect, of course, not the book aspect. We have not read the books. Mm -hmm. But um, understanding the characters from a show aspect really and really looking back on them, I'm understanding the ending a lot more than when I first watched it. Right. But with that, all that being said, man, if you're one of those type of people who say, nah, there was plot holes, uh, they just sort of forgot about your on. Uh, why do they do this? They should have done that. I get it. I mean, I can't argue with that. But, you know, the way I try to justify it in my head is sometimes as people, I act very logical. Sometimes I think things out. Sometimes I plan them methodically and I execute. And I'm proud of myself when I do that. Other times I act on emotion and I do mm -hmm. things that aren't very logical and I forget dumb things. And, you know, they're just people at the end of the day. So right. that uh, could segue into the other biggest complaint that we got from the Bells, which was. Are you ready course, to dive into this one already? With Daenerys. Oh, well, yeah. Lord. So everyone, um, you know, of course, was divided on what Daenerys should have done, shouldn't have done. And in a way, in my personal opinion, I felt like her Mad Queen arc was, you know, a little rushed because there was only six episodes. But um, it made sense to me, though. I, I, I understood it, but I understood it solely because I've been like really digging deep into these episodes and watching lore and all that crap. So I get it, but I can understand an initial reaction and be upset. The only thing about that, though, uh, the, the thing to me that kills me is. I think even in real time, I was thinking, oh, she's coming after Cersei. Yeah. Why didn't she just go kill Cersei? I, I go violently know. destroy the Red Keep, murder Cersei. But, like, why destroy everything? I don't know. I, don't, I guess breaking the will means just breaking it all, burn them all. So when people complain about that aspect, like, I get it. Right. But when people complain about Danny being a tyrant, dude, she's she's been a tyrant since day one, brother. I mean, that's that, the whole point of Danny's argument was she was freeing the slaves. And if you argue that in any type of way that's bad, society is going to shun you. But everyone knows, looking at history, like no bad person who had, and I'm not even saying Danny had bad intentions, but no evil person, no quote unquote dictator, none of that. None of those people have ever walked up to the masses and said, I hate reality. I just want to burn it all. They don't do that. They right. find something that people can't refute and they use it as a fuel to propel their mission. You know what I'm saying? And hers was liberation and all that. And, Sorry to interrupt you, but Tyrion, on this point you're saying, he ha had a perfect quote in this episode right here where he said, Danny killed bad people. We we kept we kept cheering for her. She killed another group of bad people. We kept cheering for her. She killed another group of bad pe people, and we kept cheering for her. So she keeps killing more and more bad people, and we keep cheering for her. But when she kills innocents, what do we do? Like, that's basically right, what Tyrion yeah. said. But, I mean, I get it. Everyone wanted her to just continue to be this perfect person and all that, but... That would have just been so unrealistic compared to some of the realism Game of Thrones tried to capture. And I know in the end it became unrealistic in a lot of ways. But, I mean, the reality is, is, and I know I know I've said it before, but it's an old saying, man. The path to hell is paved in good intentions. And that's just something that I sort of thought the whole time. And that's the most divisive thing about Game of Thrones is ending, I think, is some people... I think it totally makes sense that Danny went tyrannical. No one was there to like check her impulses. Yeah, blah, because blah, blah. Eamon said a Targaryen alone in the world is a dangerous thing. Well, I think the truth is when it really comes down to it, just destroying everything and destroying all your opposition, all these people that you feel like you're going to have to win over. I'm going to have to win over all these people. They don't love me. She went through this whole emotional breakdown for a whole season about how people didn't love her and care about her. 
So, I mean, like, why would she not want to just eventually on an impulse kill everyone? Right. And like, another another reason to do she's that. She's never also. batted an eye at murdering someone right. before. Another reason to do that would also be because John is a test. So anyone knowing about John was a challenge. So I feel like just destroy everyone who knows anything and you're good. I don't think realistically, I, I think they should have done a better job writing how she went tyrannical. I think that she could have, like if she would have killed 50 people, 50 innocent people because Cersei stood behind them and she would have decided to burn them to get to Cersei. Right. That could have been a really tyrannical moment that changed perceptions of Daenerys, but it didn't have to be so stupid. Right. The way Randall that she and just Dickon burnt Dickon and Missandei was wasn't enough. You know, I mean, maybe it was enough, but it wasn't enough. How it was portrayed wasn't enough. Well, I think another thing that people don't realize is just deep down in her chromosomes, like she was a Targaryen. Yeah. And I think people don't give enough credence to that. That's why you should watch House of the right, Dragon. Like, but these people they are also didn't get the luxury of that because there was two Targaryens left. So right. they didn't get to understand them because this was like, you know, I noticed in this whole episode, everything that was happening was the 2.0 version of everything. So like the people who knew the Targaryens, they're not here anymore. The way I perceived it was Danny was like, and I'm not in any way comparing her to a dog, right? But you take a dog and you put food in front of a dog. A dog's impulses to eat that food is so much stronger than you could ever possibly perceive because you're not a dog. She's a Targaryen. She wants fire and blood just on a deep fundamental level. Right. And even if like her own wants and desires, like they just couldn't overcome who she was deep down. And I think that's sort of what the story was trying to say. And I think that everything was basically having to go perfect for her. Right. And then a lot of people were saying like right. she was making cases against her and there was some truth to that, you know, you know, and, but I thought her character was great. I, I personally, I love the fact that she went tyrannical and destroyed everything. I think they could have done it different, but they didn't. And right, I just, I, about it. I'm not mad about it. I just wish that it was written a little more, like, I guess, strong. They could have made it more intelligent. There's just like everything in the show that's so written so well, so perfect. And that for me just fell a little short on that aspect, Danny's aspect. Right. I felt like her character deserved a little more credit. Well, they did, like, in the beginning, like, every every mission every time lapse was thought about and drawn out and all the eyes was dotted all the t's were crossed and it all made sense and then in the end she's just forgetting about euron right, right, right stuff like that didn't make sense uh cersei needed euron's fleet i mean I, there was a lot of things i think they could have done differently some of you guys have offered some things and but anyways man i i personally i still think that the arc was really good yeah. i think they executed it well like in terms of on the, the longevity of it was great yeah a lot of people hated on the long night i thought that was the most i thought that was such a well executed episode it was one of my favorite episodes and, so and you love the music you love the music to it like, to me that's my favorite yeah. sequence is when the dragon's trying to destroy Jon snow and theon's there and the music man like to me, that was like the peak of the show to me. So, and a lot of people hated it. So, obviously, well, my opinion because the plot hole there was we're worried about the long night, but the only casualties we took were like three. You know, you know. Well, and like, plus they position all their armies outside of castle strongholds, and, it, and it, that's what I'm saying, guys. The execution, the intelligent level of the show, obviously fell off because. But I but let me can I just rebut that for they one second? Writers, they were writers. I showers. do get because this is why I like Game of Thrones, and this is why I so. This is a personal thing. Maybe not everybody likes it, but I like about Game of Thrones that we're thrown into a world and we're figuring it out as they are. Like we're all figuring it out together. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why maybe they were a little goof sometimes. Like, and maybe they were unpredictable. Like Melisandre, if, if Melisandre wasn't there, that fight would have been like, that fight would have been like so bad. I think the reason people get upset is because you guys were saying that Game of Thrones could have been the greatest TV show to ever exist. And it is. And still. it potentially won't be because they fumbled the ending. And I get that maybe makes a lot of people upset. But, I mean, it's still got to be a great show. There are so many people who tuned in who hated the ending, who still tuned in to watch the whole series. So, on some level, dude, if you hate it that bad, you're lying to yourself. Yeah, you're just not being that honest. I, I personally regardless, I loved, I was here for Game of Thrones, period. I right. wanted to see it through. Period. There was, but don't get me wrong, man. I got a laundry list of stuff I could not stand. Like, oh, Grey Worm wants John exiled. Man, fuck Grey Worm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no offense, but if it starts the war, so damn be it. Like, who cares? Just so many, so many things and so many things like that just didn't really make sense in the end, you know? Mm -hmm. But all in all, I think it is what it is, guys, at the end of the day. And I don't really see the point in tearing it down so much. I thought it was an amazing story. I thought. You know, I think 
the show lacked a lot of a lot of intelligence, I guess, in the end, but it made up for it with amazing visual storytelling, emotion, world and I, building, and incredible. I think Game of Thrones at its worst was late in the series, and it was still so much better than most things right. put out. Period. Right. But what name below? Which don't say what happens in the ending, but name below a show that gave you the perfect ending to you. Yeah, what's the opinion. best ending of a show? Right, because for me, like I said, Game of Thrones. Maybe it wasn't the perfect ending, but I don't have something better to offer. Therefore, I I'm still on, I'm still on that. Right. I, I mean, I could have had a perfect ending, but then that would kind of be boring. If that's the you know my perfect ending would be boring. No one would want to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> so I get you have to have some twists because it is Game of Thrones. Thrones is essential for the twists. Like they're known for that. I still like the ending in a sense. Like if I understood it, like I kind of like that John went north. You know, like it's okay. He didn't mm. really want to lead. I don't. It's okay. You know, it's whatever. It's not a big enough deal for me to complain about. I like the fact that Arya went to go see what's west of Westeros. Right. Like, that's cool. But to me, okay, so my plot hole in that part, them separating, was like in the episode before The Long Night, Arya and Sansa look at each other and they say, the lone wolf dies, but the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. And then then they turn around and leave each other. (laughs) So it was like, maybe that meant that they died. I don't know. You know? Yeah, maybe. It could have meant that. It could have meant they died. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. But I don't know. Definitely think they should have done better with Littlefinger. I mean, he like he had such a good storyline going, and then Bran just shows up, just spoils it all. They kill him. It's whatever, you know. I, I was kind of disappointed in that death. I love Varys's death. I know a lot of people probably didn't. I thought he lived. He he died how he lived, man. And his his death wasn't some long drawn out, you know, dramatic thing that took right. a whole episode. It was quick. It was simple. And his final words were in, were insane. Like. He said, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> then bye. Yeah. And then by the time we got to the episode, it was pretty apparent. Like the episode had became a lot bigger than Varys mm-hmm. at that point. So he definitely served his purpose. Right. And I, I do get they killed a lot of people off just to like, you know, satisfy people and for shock value and all that. And but like I said, man, overall, I still thought it was great. So uh, I got a couple of questions I want to ask you. I want to okay. ask you, like, what are your favorite characters moments? But before we get into that, man, just I guess the last thing we'll say about the plot and all that is. It has been two weeks. The way I feel about it genuinely hasn't changed a lot. You know, I wish maybe it would because it'd make for a more interesting video. But right. I kind of feel how I feel about it. Right. I, you know, uh, I know one thing: the amount of people who absolutely say it's the worst thing of all time and who hate on it make me like it a little bit more. I guess <laughs> maybe I just wanted to defend it a little bit more because I had such a good time and right. I thought the end was just so. It was just nice to watch, man, and to have so many people just say they just hated it. But it's just people. But I mean, it just, I don't take it personal. It, at the end of the day, it should have just made you feel good because it was a good show and the longevity of it and eighty episodes. That's committing. Like you're committing. You committed years to that if you watch it live. So I, I will say this, guys. This is what I will say. After the bells, the last episode is called the Iron Throne, right? I didn't like that episode. I thought out of every episode in the series, that was my least favorite. It was boring. The pacing was really bad in it. Oh, they they spent so much time in that show, basically trying to like cope your emotions, opposed to like making sure that they made every moment count. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was the most wasted amount of screen time in the whole series. A lot needed to happen. And right. I, they just, just, I thought they were just showing destruction, like, period. Well, all the important stuff, all the stuff I wanted to see, John being captured, how he got out, the aftermath, they just skipped past But they that. did that. Okay, season eight, they did that a lot. They did a lot more behind the scenes than in front of the scenes. Right. And that's why I think season eight was not the best, because the scheming and the actual action was the cool parts of it. Yeah. So when we're having these big moments happen and we don't really know why, like, for example, Euron and Cersei planning... Um, when Euron's like, I'm walking away and he walks away and it's to go do something with his fleet or something like that. You would have much rather have seen that conversation unfold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it would have made for better politics. Like, they or sacrificed Sansa, a lot of politics. I'm sorry. And Sansa and Arya before the little finger thing, too. I mean, I'm glad I didn't see that in that moment, but, you know, that's just another example. They traded a lot of super important dialogue, which is what made this show amazing, and they sacrificed it for action and shock value. And yeah. that's the biggest mistake the show made in my opinion but it's from a week to week basis status i feel like the shock value paid off in that type of way but binging it like we did it didn't if that makes sense right well it's kind of like jamie and cersei going under the key like you can make your way down there but you can't make your way back right like i I don't know man there's a lot of things in this like why are the hell why are all the people in king's landing 
still like dude the first time i see a dragon boy i'm out bro i'm hopping in the water like, i didn't right. see the and, dragon burning the water you know i'm was swimming weird too. the coastline i'm doing something dude. Mm-hmm. i'm doing anything other than just running around the city exactly but you know how we know because we've watched house of the dragons we know about megor's hold fast yeah. kyburn did too right. kyburn brings it up to cersei they don't even go there they don't do any of that if you guys are wondering why you say you like it so much but we're sitting here like trying so hard to point out all the negatives it's because we don't want you guys to think that we're just that we're just like gonna ignore things like that like, yeah i mean those things those things are valid and they matter i'm just saying personally it's not that serious to me right. i mean the show was amazing i could watch the show 10 times and mm. I, i'll i'll end up watching the show again multiple times like me and you are gonna watch yeah. the show like you don't get a choice in this. <laughs> yeah but, and this show's great and but we're, we're just pointing out that we acknowledge them we're not silly like we're not silly willy nillies and we're not gonna sit here and lie to everyone and say oh yeah it's perfect blah 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 blah. because you know not everything's perfect and well it, it seemed like every character the rr martin would take every character and they would he would write out their whole life and then he would write the next character's whole life and he would make sure everything wound up and intertwined and it all went together. Yeah. And then they would write the script and it's almost like they challenged people. Hey, if anyone can find a flaw in this script, let me know. Towards the end, they didn't do any of that. It seems right, like, right. you know, because people could well, have pointed them out I, and, left and right. And I'm sure you guys know more about the actual logistics of all what happened in, in between the seasons. But I that. have heard that George R. R. Martin wasn't writing certain part well the books didn't come out so they didn't have any material to you know adapt right so i know that happened after like season four i believe so it, that all of that was interesting it was interesting to see all of that unfold in my opinion who is your favorite character and who is your least favorite character and tell me why okay that i don't think that's a very fair question to me because i don't have a favorite character i just can't do it mm-hmm. but i do i do say i like house stark and house targaryen out of the two which is obvious everyone does. But anyways, that's my answer on that. But my least favorite character would have had to be what Ramsey I mean, Bolton. Like, I'm not saying like which character was the worst actor. Which one did you find the most boring? Which one did you feel like you wanted to see just die the most? Ramsey. Ramsey. Yeah, well, Ramsey was the worst, right? Was he worse right. than Joffrey? Well, okay. The thing about Joffrey was, I don't know. I kind of... I kind of liked Joffrey's evilness in a weird way. This sounds bad. I know that sounds so bad, but I liked it more than I liked Ramsey's evilness is what I'm Ramsey saying. Ramsey was more sexually deviant. Yes. And there's something like, okay, it's one thing if you're going to be like a violent person, but if you're going to be like a violent and like a sexually deviant person, there's something that's just really weird. Right. About he was that. the Ted Bundy of his time. Like, for example, like that show, You. Do you remember that mm. show? Like, the guy on the show, You, man, if you guys haven't seen it, he's a stalker. He's so creepy. And he's creepy, and he's weird, and he's terrible, but he stalks people. But what really makes him super, like, just uncomfortable to me is he stalks people, and then he, like, touches himself while he's stalking people. And that extra layer of weirdness just And he puts charms you in them, weird... which is weird. He even has the weird vibes to them and still charms the people. It's and weird. that's how Ramsey was, just very... Yes, but he wasn't charming, though. And that's just the truth. No one found him charming. No, he was. To me, he said, my wife Sansa. And you thought that was charming? <laughs> no, no, not charming, but you know what I'm saying. Not charming, but he, you know what I'm saying. He, he tried to spoken. portray himself as as charming, but he right. certainly wasn't. He was just the opposite. What right. is, What about you on this? Okay, so my favorite character, I think my favorite character in the whole entire show is probably Jamie. Only because I feel like he had good lord, Jamie, 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 Jamie. Jamie was just such a cool character, man. It's just one of those things. If you line him up next to each character, I think the pros outweighed the cons in that character a little more than everybody. But I mean, I liked Arya. But see, like I like Jon Snow's character in so many ways until the end. And then I like Cersei, but I like Cersei for the wrong reasons. Cersei was like, well, she wasn't as evil as Joffrey, right. but I kind of maybe like the person I didn't like the most in terms of like who I thought was like the worst person was maybe Cersei. Like, I understand Joffrey was like violent and explosive and all that stuff, but there was just something about his like childlike behavior that just made it seem like I didn't take him as serious. I guess yeah, he was yeah, like yeah. a child. I yeah. Know. And then Ramsey was just so weird and just like cringe in a way that it was just like, like when he was holding that like sausage, he's like. You like looking goof like what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah he's just he was just like a goofus but so your favorite character is uh anyone house stark or house targaryen so daenerys and my favorite character is definitely jamie for sure I'll okay <laughs> so you like the lannisters no i don't like the lannisters i just like jamie's character it's right. funny because the, the lannisters were my least favorite house right but there was times but i like where Tyrion too so like that was complex for I me i thought Tyrion was one of my favorite characters at a point too. all of it was so complex for me that's why i can't sit here and tell you um and like on character. house of the dragons babe i'm not messing with house lannister at all <laughs> right now like they're terrible so 
<laughs> not messing with the Lannisters. Um, but anyways, um, what was the most satisfying death to you in the whole series? The most satisfying death? Maybe. I mean, I guess Ramsey, but Ramsey's death wasn't so satisfying because so much had to happen for his death. You know, like he mutilated Theon. He killed Rickon. He, he did so many terrible things. So his death was satisfying, but seeing him go, I... I don't know. I didn't really get satisfaction out of it. I just felt like, thank God. But I thought that Joffrey's death was just genuinely satisfying. Like, really? Well, like, it I, was, I was so weird about that because I, well, I, I, I didn't bad. feel so satisfied because Cersei's reaction to it. If Cersei's reaction was a little different, I like if it was the same as it was with Tommen's, mm -hmm. then maybe I wouldn't have felt so like, you know, I had a tender heart for Joffrey's death for some reason. My mindset of the characters and how I was trying to approach the show was different back then too. Mm -hmm. like, I really was trying to give... I was trying to give him like the benefit of the doubt. Right. I was like, man, his dad was a drunk. Right. Like his, his <laughs> you were giving real him dad every doesn't even like, under the sun. acknowledge him. Like, yeah. you know, how would he not be this way? You know, um, but not, nah, he was terrible, man. Definitely, definitely, definitely satisfying to see him choke like that for sure. Mm -hmm. It was sad in the moment, you know, but it, it set up another really tough moment. Uh, the lady Olena mm -hmm. admitting that she did it. So that part was sick. So babe, out of every moment in the show, what was your favorite moment? Favorite moment. God, oh, this is very on the spot. Do you have yours off the top yes, of your head? I so do. I can think of mine to go. The for long it. night, man. The long night basically it basically starts about the time that John approaches the Night King from the back and he turns around and sees John. He starts raising the dead and it's a foot race trying to get to him. He doesn't make it. And I think from that moment, about the next eight minutes or so was just incredible. I mean, just the best moment in Game of Thrones to me. And I know a lot of it didn't make sense and that you know that that's during the plot whole times but in terms of the music the execution the moment with theon and bran theon like those moments man i just think i don't know that was that was the toughest toughest 10 minute stretch in game it of really it really was well like it was well shot that whole part was beautiful right. i think that when you're facing something like that man you're facing such an uphill battle you know you have to get rid of so many characters like when jora died like when a character dies, there's so many ways you can portray it, but I really think they executed it very well. I right. think they executed the best, the best 10 seconds in the show to me, the very best 10 seconds was Theon looking at Bran. Mm -hmm. The way Theon looked down and then the music starts to cue and then he starts to run. It's like, -na 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 -na. Mm -hmm. to me, I just thought that was the best moment in the show for sure. Um, that's the moment that sticks out the most to me. Uh, so yeah, what about you? I think the best part probably to me geez it's that's really tough to say because i'm forgetting the, about them first seasons the, man. yeah that's but the most for sure the most um the best part that sticks out to me that i'll when i think of game of thrones like that comes to my head and this might sound strange but it's always i think when daenerys is i think she's in marine or no she's not in marine she's in you she has she's in one of the slave places and the first time she says dracaris in in that pit the one where he burns the slave yeah guy? yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. because that was the really first time you realized that. like right i just really love that because i think that time was when i realized just how strong daenerys was that was the that was like a really critical turning point for the show that's yeah. when you realize like what this was about to be about in a yeah. sense or how it was about to go down yeah and the, and just my emotion that like how i felt about the show is why i feel like it's my favorite moment when she's in marine and she is consolidating power and there's a shot, man. I think it's at the end of a season. I could be wrong, but basically she's standing in the Tower of Marine and there's like thunder in the background. Uh, you yeah, know what I'm yeah. talking about? And then about? The, that flag that part back gave there. me chills. Yeah. Yes. That was early on. And, and, then, and then there's another scene where she's sailing on the boat and like the dragons are sailing around her. Everyone. But what's disappointing in that scene, though, the one that I love so much is the very next episode, she's still there. But in this episode, like she's sort of losing the city. So yeah. she went like she was all the way up. She had yeah. control. And then she went to like. You know, it was just such a contrast. And that's when you that's when you really start to see Tyrion's flaws as a you yeah. know, around those times. So just the complexity of the characters in Game of Thrones as a whole was what made the show to me the best show ever. I didn't like that. But I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't like the dialogue between Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen in the last episode, The Iron Throne. I didn't like how she was talking. It was almost like she lost her mind or something. She's like. 
it, you know what's as good. You have always known what's as good. And he's like, I don't, I don't. And I'm just like, why are you talking like that? That's not how you talk. Right. I mean, I think for them to be about. lovers, it was it was weird. It was a strange like. To me, their love wasn't loving, and I don't know how to. Well, that's why that she was saying that. That's the whole thing. Like the path, the path to hell is paved in good intentions. That's why she was saying that to John. You know what's good, and she was just saying it as like a umbrella term because what she's trying to say is. I don't really know how to describe how I know it's good. I actually don't really know it's good, but just deep down, like I just know it's good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And John's saying, like, actually, like, what you might think is good isn't always good. So right. without hindsight, it's kind of hard to know sometimes. And she just wasn't trying to hear that. And then it turns out she'll always be his queen. And then <laughs> <laughs> got her. So I thought that part was really sad too. But yeah. I just think that I wish they would have executed that part a little better. I'm not gonna lie. I think I wish the night, the army of the dead, was more important. If that if that makes sense, because I felt like we studied, we trained, we ha- we recruited people well, from the we first joined. scene of the show. Yeah, yeah, we joined. We it was always something in the back of our heads. So don't get me wrong. I loved the long night episode, but I just wish that the stakes were higher and I wish it mattered more. That's all. Yeah. Like I said, man, I you know, I'm not smart enough to rewrite it. You know, me either, like, I so. wish I wish that in my brain I could construct better endings and stuff like Maybe we should ask AI, hey, write a perfect ending to Game of Thrones. <laughs> right. See what it does. <laughs> <laughs> I would make jokes, but anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know how that would go. Uh, I thought it was great, guys. We had so much fun watching it. I don't really know what else to say. The characters were awesome. Um, this, you know, we didn't get too technical in this, but just overall, we just wanted to share some of our favorite moments and thoughts. And maybe the last thing I would ask you, babe, is when before we get off since we're doing game of thrones when you think of game of thrones what it meant to you what it meant for our channel you know we had a lot of growth we met a lot of people uh learned a lot of lessons in the show what do you think the biggest lesson from this whole entire experience has been from you for you um honestly this is gonna sound maybe weird but that i actually am into and like world building and fantasy series (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good lesson, right? Because I genuinely, I when I heard about dragons and all that crap, I was like, dude, the dragons are going to talk. The people are going to be like weird medieval people. Because, you know, I've been in med- medieval times and I'm like, Ugh. like, I don't want to watch that crap. You don't and, like to eat the chicken wings? With your no, hands. I hate it. I hate it. I don't really like chicken that much. But anyways, that's a side note. Sorry, the hound, if you heard that. But um, Anyways, I realized that that is kind of my thing. Like, I like it. I like the world building. I like lore. I like I like that. So me establishing that is my like, I don't know, it's a hobby. Maybe <laughs> I yeah. like that. That's what I found the most. And also just like how many others feel the same way. Yeah. How about you? I learned a lot, man. Uh, you know, I learned. I learned that if you're going to go into a big series like this, you need to take some time out to learn these people's names because you will miss a lot of information if you don't. I know that sounds obvious, you know, but guys, this is like. Uh oh. Amber or Valdosta. That's not close. Guys, if y'all see a 2024 black Toyota Camry from Valdosta, let Pull us know. over citizen arrest right now. I think the biggest thing I learned, man, is obviously that when it comes to TV shows, stuff like this, you know, you got to take them very serious. You have to study them and understand like who the characters are and you know you just got to do your homework you know when you watch an episode write down who the characters are try to remember their names i think that will help us a lot going forward i think i learned a lot about how to talk about a tv show how not to i think i learned a lot about how to watch a tv show you know like we learned a lot we watched so much symbolism guys that we would never pick up just like regularly because like it's just average everyday stuff sometimes we did 80 episodes in front of a whole audience that sat there and watched us a large body of work so i definitely think that i learned a lot about what i'm good at picking up at i learned that i need to be better at like picking up details and stuff yeah. but i think the biggest thing the show taught me is that you know i don't really know what the show taught me i think the show taught me that i need to stop being so i guess judgmental in a sense i know the, it's all going to be cliches from here guys so if you don't love cliches man just keep it moving but you know be less judgmental theon uh <laughs> Do the right thing, Ned Stark. Sometimes doing the right thing doesn't always result in the best possible outcome, Ned Stark. Right. But, and Rob I also Stark. learned uh, <laughs> wars before Rob, uh, Rob Stark. I can't say it because it's a bad word. But 
I learned don't get distracted by females if you're in war. <laughs> so wars before boars, if y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> I learned that if I ever become the king, definitely don't drink myself to death. And I think one of the biggest things I learned, man, is keep an open mind about other people's perspectives because we watched this whole entire series and I perceived so many characters to be one way. And there are so many people who are fundamentally in a different reality than I am mm -hmm. and they just do not see or agree with me. So obviously just we sit here and we watch these TV shows just by ourselves every day. So it's, it's really good to remember that a lot of people have different perceptions and stuff. And a lot of that came up watching House of the Dragons because your perception of these characters will be significantly different mm -hmm. as you move on. So I think really what I taught me is what it taught me is that there's a lot of really in-depth writing out there. A lot of really cool TV shows that people are really into. And if so many people are into something, then maybe we should be more open minded right. and trying it, you know, so. Which which is this channel as a whole has made me try a lot more things. Like, oh, yeah. I was never I could have died and not watched the Scream franchise, even the Marvel series. Sorry, I know you guys that's unpopular and you don't want to hear it, but. The truth is, I probably wouldn't have watched it if we weren't on this channel. So right. opening my mind to things that I'm actually I actually really like and enjoy is amazing. And Game of Thrones definitely is the best series and will forever be the best series. And I wouldn't have watched it if it wasn't for you guys. Right. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that 100 percent, man. Uh, maybe we would have got around to watching it. Who knows? But best show ever. It was really good, man. Uh, it was really good. I, Lord of the Rings sort of holds up to this. But other than that, I definitely think this is. Some of the best stuff i've ever seen so thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for sure uh comment really all been. your favorite stuff that we brought up below please. yeah let us know let we us love know. to hear it we do read your comments maybe we're not the best at answering them but we do read them we do read them man there's a lot of them so we do our best uh hit us up on patreon if you guys want to see the full uncut reactions thank you guys so much for hanging out we're gonna see you guys over on house of dragons so we'll see y'all over there thank you guys